This is HBU Huskies men's basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Huskies basketball is brought to you by these corporate partners of HBU Athletics, Houston Federal Credit Union, Marriott Houston West Chase, the Memorial Hermann Healthcare System, Raising Canes, Under Armour, Firehouse Subs, Pepsi, Shipley Donuts, Four Points by Sheraton, IBEW Local 716, Jimmy John's, Kalachi Factory, and Holiday Inn Express. The DNA Husky Sports Network is your home all season long for HBU Huskies men's basketball. And right now it's just about game time, so let's head out to the arena. Good evening, everybody. Welcome in to Sharp Gym here on a rainy Wednesday night in Houston. Glad to have you along for the ride tonight, wherever you are around the city of Houston, across the state of Texas, around the country, or even around the world on the World Wide Web. Thanks for making HBU Huskies basketball a part of your Wednesday evening. Well, Happy New Year, everybody. I'm Lonnie King. Glad to have you in for the pregame show tonight. And as we flip the calendar over into 2019, that also means this year that we flip into conference mode as the Huskies open their Southland Conference season tonight against the Lamar Cardinals here on the home floor. And the Huskies do get to open up the conference this year on the home floor before they head out on the road for the next three dates. Saturday will be in New Orleans to take on the UNO Privateers before getting a week off and then heading to Thibodeau next Saturday, the 12th, to take on Nichols. And then we'll finish up the little road swing in Abilene against the Abilene Christian Wildcats on January the 16th before the next home date will be here against Sam Houston State on January the 19th. But the Huskies want to open up the conference season the right way. You know, they rebounded from a tough loss at Miami to the Miami Hurricanes last time out against Dallas Christian with a huge win, a 51-point win, 143-92, to that saw everybody on the roster that's active get into the game. And uh, we saw some guys have some extremely good numbers. In fact, the numbers were so good that now the Huskies have four players averaging double-figure scoring for the season. Uh, Ian DeBose still leads the way with 18.3 points per contest. He is followed, though, by Jalen Gates, who comes off the bench for 11.6. And then Ed Hart, the senior center for the Huskies, averages 10.8, while Oliver Lynch Daniels has moved into the double-figure category on the scorecard with 10.4 points per contest this year. The Huskies will be going up against a team in Lamar, though, that is hot right now. They've won their last three games coming into this one with wins in December over Texas Southern at home, Howard Payne also at home, and Champion Christian the last time out on Saturday evening. They knocked off Champion Christian 122-58 to in that game to lead them into this one tonight. But these two teams have developed a nice little rivalry over the years, especially since... The Huskies have entered the Southland Conference, you know, uh, five years ago when the Huskies came into the league, they only played one time, and uh, Lamar won that single game that year. But since then, they're 4-4 four and four against each other. Last year, though, the Cardinals uh, took both games in the series, winning both here in Sharp Gym and over at the Montaigne Center in Beaumont uh, by double-digit margins. So the Huskies will come in looking to avenge those two losses tonight. Overall, in the history of this uh, matchup, HBU is 8-10 and 10 against Lamar, and they'll look to get a little closer to 500 tonight. Well, we'll talk about the Cardinals with assistant coach Stephen Key, and then we'll visit with the head coach Ron Cottrell, and that'll take us right up to the starting lineups and the opening tip, and we'll get going right now on the Huskies pregame show on the Husky Sports Network. Houston Federal Credit Union and Houston Baptist University have joined forces to put the howl back in your finances. 
HFCU offers several products and services such as auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards. And HFCU has a financial education program, Elevate, which is tailored to helping you increase your financial knowledge. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Your heart sounds good, Daddy. Regular checkups are good for many things. No tumors. Uh-oh. Your colon sounds funny. But they can't detect everything. At the Memorial Hermann Wellness Institute, get a full body scan, heart scan, or virtual colonoscopy to help you find problems early enough to do something about them. I'm glad you're okay, Daddy. Schedule your scan today. Call 713-222-CARE. Memorial Hermann for your whole life. Coming to you in Living Cola. Pepsi Cola, from the wonderful folks who put the R in Cola. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. First of all, the conference opener. It's back like on the, the Huskies the pregame show. It's time for, for the our team. Um, eye on the opponent segment. How do you feel like the pre-conference schedule for- has prepared you for this evening in the games ahead? You know, I think looking back, um, I think you know, co- as coaches, we always look back and we we look at the ones that you know, a couple of games might have slipped away. You know, things like that. Um, obviously, you know, we had a, a big win at Thanksgiving, and and then we kind of got a couple of games that just kind of. You know, got away from us. Um, but but the biggest thing I think we we all took from it was that we were we were competitive um, for eleven. The, you know, the first eleven games we were competitive. You know, with all but just a few stretches um, of of that that first half. And I, I think that's the one thing we've been trying to build on is that um, keeping that mindset and that that mentality of next play, you know, moving on every time, you know, no matter if something's good, something's bad, whatever, that we're moving on, we're moving on, we're moving on, we're keeping playing, we're keeping playing, and we're going to continue to play until the final horn goes off. And I think the guys have really bought into um, to doing that, and they've seen some good results from that. And I think that the, you know, obviously our schedule, you know, I've seen a couple of places where the, the schedule was ranked, you know, 17th or 21st, somewhere in there. Um you know, out of conference, and uh, that's you know, while that's daunting a lot of times, it, it I think it has prepared us pretty well. Yeah, I, and I I saw just yesterday that uh, I think uh, the latest ranking is 21st in the nation, highest ranked Southland Conference team schedule so far this season. Um, how will that that serve you getting ready for these games ahead? Well, hopefully, you know, we've been in enough situations. Um, close games uh, having to fight back from deficits um being ahead and and learning from you know maybe having leads and giving them up uh things like that that we've been in uh plenty of situations like that in the first 11 games it's not it hasn't been a situation where um you know five or six of these games in the first half were were blowouts one way or the other or things like that every game has been competitive and and that has put our guys in a position where they've had to you know, make plays, continue to try and make plays and learn from their mistakes very quickly and then figure out how to win ball games. And I think we've done that. Um, you know, while the record, you know, some people may look at the record and say four and seven, that's not really very good. You know, I would still look at the record and who we've played mm-hmm. and the fact that, you know, our, our opponents have a 65% winning percentage right now and that that kind of, that kind of schedule prepares you, good and bad, for the long haul. 
Well, and you you bumped that up against the schedule Lamar has played. They've got a seven and six record, but uh, I think their strength of schedule is way down the list in the conference. So it it, it is kind of hard if you are just looking at wins and losses. It's kind of hard to get a read on where a team is. Yeah, it is sometimes, but um, you know everybody's record is the same mm-hmm. today, and and that's the biggest thing we've been trying to get across to the guys is that everybody's zero and zero today. Nobody cares what you've done in the past eleven games or twelve games, whatever. It's all about what starts now, and we're getting ready to play a team that, um, since we've been in the the Southland, we've we've forged a pretty good little rivalry between the two schools um, on the court. Uh, I think I looked the other day, and you know, out of the last eight or nine, eight, eight games, I think it is only two have been decided by double figures. Mm-hmm. Um, every other game has been you know within seven or eight, you know, something like that. Even a couple of you know an overtime game here and things like that, and and so. It's been a very good rivalry, um, not much distance between the two schools, um, and I think it's it's been good for both of us uh, to be able to do that and to get that kind of game right out of the chute. Um, it's going to tell us a lot about us right away. And on top of those components, you, you add in the fact that if you look at these guys on paper, they've got a lot of similar numbers, especially mm-hmm. offensively, yeah. to, to the Huskies. Yeah. Uh, what do you expect to see from you them? Know, they they want to run. They want to get up and down the floor. Um, they they want to put the ball in the basket, and they've got a couple of guys that really do that very very well. Obviously, Nick Garth and 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 Josh and Ziacor have been two guys over the past you know three years that we've come you know well acquainted with. Um, Nick can shoot it from you know pretty much any area code, um, and 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 Ziacor has really improved. Um, year by year uh, since he came into the league, uh, you know, came in as, as what we, you know, we like to call sometimes a runner, jumper, dunker, mm-hmm. um, just athlete. And then every year it seems like he has added something to his offensive game, you know, hook shot here, a jumper, being able to put the ball on the floor, either direction, running the floor. Um, and then obviously he's just a, a one of, probably one of the bigger rebounders uh, numbers wise, you know, three offensive boards a game. Um, he has really turned himself into one of the probably one of the better post players in this league. Obviously, one of the better players in this league. Uh, and then they've got a nice uh, a group of uh, you know other complementary pieces. Uh, you know th- that Jordan Hunter, the transfer from New Mexico, is a really good point guard. Uh, they've got several transfer guys that have, have fit in very nicely with what they do. Um, they present a lot of problems, um, but they you know on the other side they've got a guard. They've got to guard us as well, and I think we pose a lot of problems for people too. Just you know, from what we get um, up and down our lineup. One thing that jumped out at me on the stat sheet was the fact that they're number seven in the nation in steals mm-hmm. per game. Uh, yeah. What defensive challenges do they pose? You know, I think a lot of that can you know some of that can be attributed to the fact that they've been pressing a lot in the first half. Um, you know, obviously they've they've been running and gunning and and. You know some of the some of that is schedule and and some other things and and so they are going to get a lot of you know a lot of back taps and and you know pressing and trapping and getting steals out of that and things like that. But conversely, so far this year, I think we've done a pretty good job of handling the ball, um, keeping you know keeping possession, not turning it over, being smart with it, um, and and doing a good job of handling other teams' pressure. Um, and I think that's something that going forward in the conference, you're going to see a lot of. You're going to see a lot of pressure defense in this conference, a lot of handsy teams, mm-hmm. uh, a lot of physical teams. Um, and, you know, we're going to have to continue that if we want to be successful is being able to deal with pressure. So what's key's key in the conference opener tonight? The key's key is Lamar having less points than HBU. And if that is if that is the case, then we will be off to a very happy new year. All right. Well, happy new year anyway. Happy new year to you. Stephen Key, assistant coach for the Huskies, will take a timeout and come back with more on the Huskies pregame show after this. Run with UA Map My Run. With your UA Connected footwear, you can leave your phone behind. However, if you choose to run with it, the UA Map My Run app will give map views of your route and a deeper look at your workout with additional stats. We are under our The future! Under Armour. I'm Rob.
Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. Back when we were firemen, when it came to food, we said it better be something good and, and a lot, lot of it. it. That's what you get at Firehouse Subs. Take our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breasts, Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese, all steam heated and piled high on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. You're going to cover that, right? My money's on the sub. Love the confidence. <laughs> Firehouse Sub, founded by firemen. Building Houston to compete on the world stage is what we do at the IBW. It's important to us that Houston knows why we do what we do, not just what we do. Sure, we're the best electricians. We train 10,000 hours to be the best. But we get up early so Houston is built to compete. To be the best, hire the best. Skilled labor isn't cheap, and cheap labor just isn't all that skilled. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Welcome back into the Huskies pregame show. It's time for our game time chat with the head coach, Ron Cottrell, as we get ready for the conference opener tonight against the Lamar Cardinals here at Sharp Gym. Coach, uh, start of the conference season. It's it's just about as exciting for those of us who watch as the season opener is. Yeah, certainly. Uh, you know, anytime you start your season in November, you're you're fired up about getting getting going and getting the guys on the court and and seeing what kind of crew you're going to have for that year. But but when conference play starts, it all gears up to another level, and certainly our guys are are uh, excited about it. We've had really good workouts the last couple of days, and, and there is certainly an, another level of focus that comes into being during during conference play. Well, we asked Coach Key this question, but you know, looking at, as we do at the pre-conference schedule every year to see that you purposely try to make it challenging for conference season, how has the team responded to the pre-conference schedule this year? You know, I think uh, we've done a really good job of, of keeping – games in perspective you know we haven't won as nearly as many as we would would certainly have liked to have uh but we knew that the level of competition that we were playing was was very stiff and and our guys came to compete every night and, and showed up ready to go and and really uh put ourselves in positions to win some ball games that that had things fallen just right would have and then certainly against wake it did and so uh, i think our guys answered the bell every night that we put them out there uh against you know one of the best conference uh, non-conference uh, schedules in the country yeah, number 21, I think I saw yesterday, this week's ranking for the strength of schedule. But as far as Lamar goes, and, and the schedule ahead for that matter, uh, where do you feel like the confidence level for the guys is right now? Well, I, I think as you go into conference play, knowing that everyone's played a very varied type of non-conference schedule it's hard to get a feel for kind of where people are and and how you're going to stack up within the conference you just have to worry about yourself at the beginning of this and worry about making sure that you come focused and, and ready to play and and uh and then as we kind of go along through conference we'll kind of get a feel for who's the stronger teams and 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 who think who you're going to have to really beat to to put yourself in good positions uh in the conference race so right now the the conference is is i think is going to be competitive i think it's athletic as 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 i've seen it as, since we've been in the league uh i've watched several different games at different times during the pre-conference uh schedule and and certainly have been impressed with what I've seen across the league. But uh, Lamar pr presents a, a definite challenge in, in their experience and in, in athleticism and in, in what they're able to do. You speak of that experience, and they do have uh, a couple of guys. I'm, I'm thinking of Garth and Zikor that have been – we've seen them for, I think, about three, maybe four years now. Um, and, and that has to be a benefit to them this year, having played together for so long. 
Yeah, those guys in particular, the two that you named, are guys that really have been a thorn in our side and and have been really good players uh, for their for their program. And they've added some good transfers in with them and developed T.J. Atwood along the way uh, to to add into that group as well. And so they they've got a really potent team. I mean, they can really score the basketball, and and certainly Nick Garth leads the way for that. Uh, but in Ziacor has, has really become a, a dominant player inside for them and, and a really good rebounder and someone we're going to have to pay particular attention to tonight. Defensively, they've uh, they've put up some good numbers this year. I think they're top 10 in the country in, in steals per game. Um, do you do you look at that and chalk that up to maybe the the strength of their opponents, or are they going to be a tough defensive matchup for you? Well, I don't think there's any doubt they'll be a tough team. They're they're going to come out and they're going to press and they're going to be aggressive and they're going to look to get steals and and we're going to have to make good decisions with the ball and be strong. They're they're going to they're going to challenge you physically uh, with the ball in your hands and and see how strong you are and and if they can take it from you they will and and uh, so there's there's no doubt this is a a tough tough challenge to start out conference play. You know, you talk about the the pressing defense, and you've seen that in a lot of games this year. Um, How pleased have you been with the way your guys have handled that? I think, you know, so far we've done a pretty good job, you know, kind of knock on wood. I mean, you don't want to jinx tonight, but uh, I I think our guys have done a pretty good job of seeing a lot of different types of press and and being able to adapt and uh, and be able to attack. That's the thing that we talk to our guys about is not just breaking a press, but trying to attack on the back end of it and seeing if you can get some numbers and and get some easier baskets than, than going five on five every time down the floor. Saw Braxton back in the starting lineup in the last game. Will we see that again? Yeah, Braxton's back back where I think he 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 has you know has been in the past and 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 really ready to play. And and that's nothing against Stephen Osuji at all. Stephen's done a good job for us, and and we continue to expect him to do a good job for us in a reserve role. And he's going to have to play some major minutes for us along the way. Uh, but yeah, there's no doubt that that I think our guys understand that when Braxton's on the floor. Uh, we feel really comfortable about him uh, being the guy handling the ball, making decisions. All right. Let's hope we start with a win tonight. All right. That'd be great. That's head coach Ron Cottrell. We'll take a timeout and come back with starting lineups and all the play-by-play straight ahead on the Husky Sports Network. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. And welcome back into Sharp Gym. Just about set to go with tonight's opening tip. Give you the starters here as we get ready to go. Jordan Hunter, Nick Garth, V.J. Holmes, T.J. Atwood, and Josh and Zikor starred for Tick Price and the Lamar Cardinals. The Huskies take the opening tip but lose the basketball as Oliver Lynch Daniels tried to take off to get a run out to get things going, and we are underway. Ollie is joined in the backcourt by Braxton Bonds at the point. On the wings, Philip McKenzie and leading scorer Ian DeBose, and there is... Nick Garth from the right angle off the window for two for the first point of the ball game for the Cardinals. Rounding out the starting five for the Huskies is Edward Hart, the senior center from the Phoenix area. Ball's knocked out of bounds by Hunter. Jordan Hunter, the junior transfer from New Mexico. He is a Beaumont kid, though. Went to Central High School in Beaumont. Hart has the basketball, gives it off out top to Ollie Lynch Daniels. Feed it back into the high post to Hart. Give it to Bonds on the move. Left side on the baseline, and he lays it off the glass and down through. Braxton had 16 last time out. He's off to a quick start here with the first two of the ball game for the Huskies. 19-12 to go, tied at two. Hunter out top, left side. Flip it high post in. Zekor tried to go down low, and it's tipped and stolen away. Bonds gets it to Lynch Daniels. Ollie up the floor. Leave it out top for McKenzie. They'll set it up. Back to Lynch Daniels. Ollie back to McKenzie. Fires a three. Short off the iron, and the rebound bounces on the floor. It's going to be picked up by Atwood and given off to Hunter. Hunter tries to take it down deep. Almost lost it. Saves it to Nziakor, though. And he'll get it right back to Hunter with 17 on the shot clock. Holmes' left side angle is going to get bumped as he tried to drive in. He raised the arm, but they're going to call a foul on Ian DuBose. Looked like Holmes got that arm up trying to shield DuBose away. But the officials did not see it that way. Brent Dugas is our lead official tonight. And he gets the ball inbounds. 
for the Cardinals. Garth has it to Nziacor, and he's going to fly right by Ian DeBose and gets a little jam from the right angle, lays it in for two. It's 4-2 Lamar, and now we've got a whistle and a foul going to be called the other way on Jordan Hunter for Lamar. That's going to be their first team foul. So even sings up in the foul category. And it'll be Huskies basketball across the way right in front of the Lamar bench. DeBose gets it on the inbounds pass, and he drains a three from the top of the arc and gives the Huskies their first lead of the ballgame, 5-4. But quickly back the other way, it's V.J. Holmes averaging five and a half points per game, and he gets an easy layup on the long outlet. And they're back on top, 6-5. But Ian's going to answer with his second three in a row. He's got six of the eight for Huskies. Garth back the other way. Quick trigger, won't go. And this time the rebound pulled down by Oliver Lynch Daniels. Outlet up ahead to DeBose. To the rack, got it. Ian out in a hurry. And the nice dish from Oliver Lynch Daniels. And the Huskies increase the lead to four with 17 and a half minutes yet to go till halftime. Down low, and Ziacor in the low blocks, right side, puts it up off the iron, and DuBose with the board for the Huskies. He brings it up in a hurry. Picked up by Holmes, tries to take it in, bump from behind, knocked out of bounds. No foul, but it's out of bounds off of V.J. Holmes. It'll be Huskies basketball. Ian is helped up by McKenzie and Lynch Daniels as he took a hard spill. It'll be Huskies basketball on the baseline. Bonds gets it into DeBose, feed it into the post, left side to hard, turn around, and he's going to be called for a walk. Trying to muscle his way inside in the paint there and position underneath on a double team by Nziacor and also Atwood. And it caused Ed to kind of shuffle the pivot foot. So the turnover will give it to Lamar with 17 minutes to go in the first half, and the Huskies up by four. Garth from the right elbow has it partially blocked and DeBose pulls it down. Up ahead, McKenzie on the move. Cut to the baseline. He'll pull up, face up, jumper over Atwood, and he's got it. And the Huskies double up 12 6, and we've got a whistle and a timeout called by Tick Price. And the Huskies are out to a quick start with 16.45 to go. This is going to be a coach's timeout, a 30 second timeout. So we'll hang on to it right here. Told you that last year, Lamar won both the meetings between these two teams. They were both double-digit wins, 86-68 here at Sharp Gym. And then 85-60 or 85-71 over in Beaumont last season. So the Huskies... Wanting to get out to a quick start tonight. As we said, they open up the conference season with this one here at home, but they're out on the road for the next three. You'd love to defend the home court in the opener before you head out on the road for three. Holmes to the near sideline to inbound the ball, and he gets it to Atwood, and Lamar has it in the half court as the clock rolls back into motion. Hunter out top, feeds in Zekor, high post, picked up. By McKenzie, tries to drive down, forces one up with the right hand. Good defense by the Worm that time, and the rebound comes off to Hart, and he leaves it for DeBose. Drive it in, pull up, cross court into the corner to Phil. Left side going to drive through, tried to dish it out on the wing. Almost lost it, but tips it to Bonds. Down low to Ed Hart, and he goes up off the glass with a scoop for two. Ed gets his first points of the ball game, and the Huskies are out to an eight-point advantage, 14-6. to six. Roll down to the 16-minute mark. Pass cross court. Left side to Garth. He's going to drive back to the middle. Float it up. And let's see. Whistle in the paint. And they're going to call a blocking foul on Ed. Hart picks it up. His first. Team's second. Shot did not go. But Garth will get a couple of free throws. But we've got a timeout on the floor. Timeout to go. With 15.57 left here in the first half. And the Huskies up by eight, 14 to six. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. And if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. 
It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man and the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. 15.57 to go here in the first half of play in the conference opener at Sharp Gym. The Huskies with a 14-6 lead. Huskies are out of the gate shooting six of eight from the floor, 75%, two of three from outside the arc. Meanwhile, Lamar, four, uh, I'm sorry, three of seven for 43%. They're 0 for 1 outside the arc. Nick Garth going to the free throw line for the first time for either team tonight out of the timeout, and he makes the first free throw. We'll have one more to come. The foul that got Garth to the line was charged to Edward Hart. Hart with one. DeBose also has one. Garth gets them both to go, and he will check out after making those free throws. Laquarius Page, a 6'3 junior transfer from Indiana State, a native of West Orange, Texas, checks in for Garth. Huskies face some pressure in the backcourt, and we expected to see that, a little three-quarter court trap, and they get it across in plenty of time. Oliver Lance Daniels from Bonds. He'll look left side to DeBose, picked up by Holmes. Dribbles out top, takes it back in, going to drive down the middle, put it up, has it blocked, and the rebound comes off to Atwood. Outlet up ahead to Hunter on the run, blocked from behind by McKenzie, but the follow up and in by Nziacore. And he draws them back to within four, 14-10. There's Bonds, though, quickly the other way, and he goes off the glass for two. Braxton with four, and the Huskies back up by six, 16-10. Page has checked in and has the basketball on top, tries to feed it inside and has it knocked away. Hart hits the deck. Saves it to Bonds up ahead. McKenzie off the glass and in for two. And the Huskies in transition are getting out, moving the ball, and they're making it pay off for themselves. And the lead is back up to eight. Phil's got four now. The Huskies lead 18-10, 14-43 to go till halftime. Hunter takes it to the left angle, leaves it back out top for Atwood. T.J. Atwood dribbles to the right angle, now goes back to the middle, tries to put it up over Edward Hart and has a nice little shovel high off the window for two. And Atwood is on the board for the first time tonight. It's 18-12, Huskies by six. DeBose back the other way, right side, tries to jam it down through. He's bumped, it's either Holmes or Atwood who got him and they're gonna call it on VJ Holmes. His first, second team foul on the Cardinals. Going to get substitutions for the Huskies. DeBose will get a free throw first, though, and his first one is up, and it is good. Ian at the line this year, 72% free throw shooters. We told you he averages just over 18 points per game. He's already got nine now here in the first half. Benjamin Yoloko has checked in for Edward Hart. Jalen Gates has checked in for Braxton Bonds. There's a miss on the free throw, but it's tipped to Gates. He fires a three, rattles out, won't stay down in the rebound control by Page. Long outlet up ahead, and Garth is all alone. He'll get the easy run out and layup. And the Huskies didn't get back on defense there. Oliver Lynch Daniels dribbles to the right side. 19-14, a five-point lead for HBU. Feed it down low to Yuloko. Feed it in the corner, though with an outlet to Lynch Daniels. His three won't go, and back the other way in a hurry. The Cardinals go. Garth with a long shot from the three-point angle on the right side. He won't get it to go, and the Huskies pull down the board. 
Gates, left side to Lynch Daniels, tries to drive, reverses himself, gets stuck in a double team, leave it in the corner for Jalen Gates. He fires up a wild three. Shot clock winding down, and Jalen with an off-balance shot. It did not go. Hunter back the other way. His shot won't go. And we've got into in action, but not very effective right now. 19-14, and we've got a whistle and a foul. Hunter's going to draw his second personal as McKenzie brought it up the floor. And that's going to allow Ty Dalton to check in for the Huskies. He'll give a spell to Ian DeBose. Atwood and Enzico are going to check out for Lamar. Checking in for the Cardinals will be Jordan Foster, a 6'9 sophomore from Lafayette, Louisiana. And a whistle on the inbounds pass, and there's going to be an offensive foul called. I believe they got McKenzie. Yeah, Philip McKenzie with the personal. Edwin Judy is also checked in, junior transfer from Montreal and Gillette College. He gets the ball inbounds to B.J. Holmes, and they bring it up into the forecourt. Screen from Foster. Holmes kicks it back to Page. He fires up a three and gets it from the angle. Laquarius Page with his first points of the game. It's a 25% three-point shooter for the season, averaging just over five a game, and he's got three on that one. Brings it back to within two, 19-17. 12.38 to go till halftime. Here's Yuloko down low. He has it tipped away, knocked out of bounds by Foster. It'll be Huskies basketball on the baseline. Huskies are scoreless now in the last minute and 41 seconds. 5-0 run right now for the Cardinals. 7-1 run in the last 2.18. There's a tip and a steal by the Cardinals. Garth will bring it back the other way. Leaves it for Holmes. Holmes to the middle. Kick it into the left corner to Judy. Judy finds Page. He fires a three off the mark this time, and Ty Dalton is there to clear the glass. Gets it off to McKenzie. Finds Oliver Lynch Daniels. He'll fire a three from the right angle. Won't go. The rebound tipped, and it's going to go out of bounds off the body, I believe they say, of Philip McKenzie. Jalen Gates was there. He could not grab it. Hart and Ian DeBose are going to check back in along with Braxton Bonds. And Lynch Daniels, Gates, and Yoloko will head back to the bench with 12 minutes to go here. Still a two-point game, 19-17. Lamar looking to tie or take the lead on this possession. Garth with the basketball, and Ed pops out high to pick him up. Now he switches back down low. As Bonds comes out, Garth still with the dribble. Now feeds Holmes, drives in to the middle and swatted away by Bonds. He was trying to sell the officials on the fact that it went off Holmes, but they say no, swatted out by Braxton Bonds. And that'll be out of bounds off the Huskies and stops the clock with 11.40 to go. So it brings us to a timeout on the floor. The Huskies still with a two-point lead, but in a bit of a drought right now. We'll see if they can snap out of it when we come back on the Husky Sports Network. What's on your mind, kid? Make it fast. I'd like to work here at Jimmy John's World's Greatest Gourmet Sandwich Shop, sir. Why do you want to work at Jimmy John's, kid? I'm perfect for Jimmy John's. Doing what? Delivery. Delivery? Delivery. We deliver pretty faster at Jimmy John's. That's what I heard. What'd you hear? You deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. Then you heard right. I'm a fast study, sir. You know the Jim John's slogan? The Jimmy John's slogan. Jim John's slogan is sub so fast you'll freak. Sub so fast you'll freak is a slow slogan, sir. When people call for a Jimmy John's sandwich, they want it fast. Then I'm your man, sir. How so? Because I'm fast. Fast at what? Fast at everything. Can you deliver fast? I can deliver fast. How fast? I can run at 440 and 220. Minutes? No seconds. That's fast. You deliver before? I delivered newspapers before. Were you fast? Very fast. How fast? People got tomorrow's paper today. That's fast. So do I have the job? Not so fast. How do I know you're not just some fast talker? I can get your references. When? Now. These are good references. Thank you. But at Jimmy John's, you got to be more than fast. More than fast. you got to be polite. Fast and polite. Fast and polite. I can do fast and polite. Okay, give me some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, I thought it over. When can you start? Now. Now it's good. What's your name, kid? Stefan Amalabadopoulos. Too long. How about Ed? That's fine. Welcome aboard, Ed. Jimmy John's Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. Hi, I'm Ron Cottrell. Thanks for listening to HBU Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Back here at Sharp Gym, Lonnie King along with you here in the first half of our conference opener tonight. Huskies have now 
Taking their scoreless drought to two minutes and 38 seconds, Jackson Stent has checked in for the first time this evening, and the Huskies are going to go to some pressure, and there's an inbounds pass stolen away by Stent. He'll bring it up the floor, waits for his teammates to catch up, and leaves it right side for Ty Dalton. Dalton way out top, looking to set it up, and he's going to be bumped by Page. Laquarius Page trying to reach in to swat it away. Bump Dalton on the arm instead. It'll be his first foul. Fourth team foul on Lamar. Foster will check out, and Zekor checks back in. And the Huskies get it inbounds. Bonds to Hart, and he gets it right back. Bonds out top. Backside pass to Dalton. He'll drive down, cut off at the baseline by a double team. Gets it back on the wing to Bonds. He's going to drive in, floats it up off the mark, hits the side of the board, and comes off. To Holmes, he's on the run in the red uniforms, gets it off to Judy, left side three, won't go, and the rebound cleared by Ian DeBose for the Huskies. 11 minutes to go till halftime. Now both teams in a bit of a scoring drought. Still 19-17, Huskies by two. Hart back to the basket at the left elbow, goes back out high to Ian DeBose. He wants a screen now from Ed, and he gets one, takes it left angle, now back to the middle, into the paint, floated up and it'll stay down. Mary go round around the iron and that finally breaks the scoring drought. 21-17, 10 and a half to go till halftime. Huskies back up by four. Garth picked up by Dalton. Now Stent comes over to help out. Kick it back left side to Holmes, down low. He goes to Judy, back it in on Stent in the paint, floats it up, roll it in off the iron and they're gonna call Jackson for a foul. On the body, the first foul on Stent, the fourth foul on the Huskies. Jackson's looking to try to make a case that all he did was stand there. Coach Cottrell up off the bench. He can't understand where the foul was on that call. Brent Dugas, Ryan McDaniel, Trent Dews, the officiating crew for this one tonight. And they send Judy to the free throw line for the first time. One and one. Or no, sorry, a second uh, of a plus one after the made field goal. And he misses it. So it's still a two-point game. And now DeBose is going to be fouled on the other end. And this, I believe, is a second foul on B.J. Holmes. It is his second. So they've got five team fouls. Hunter has two and Holmes has two. Huskies to the baseline. And Bonds will get it out top to Hart and take it right back. Feed it to Hart, give and go, and he takes it in, and they're going to call an offensive foul on that one. Oh, my goodness, the little semicircle underneath in the paint is supposed to automatically be a blocking foul. And it looked from this angle like Hart may have had his defender. I think it was in Zekor who hit the deck. But that'll be the first on Ed. Check it, the second foul on Ed. He'll check out with his two fouls now. And they'll bring Phillip McKenzie back out onto the floor for him. So the Huskies now go with a little bit smaller lineup. Still a fairly good matchup for the Huskies against the Cardinals. They feed it down low to Zekor, and he's double teamed, and we're going to get a travel. And Zekor... Trying to draw a foul, double teamed by Dalton and also McKenzie down low, or Stent down low, and instead he walked. Dalton up the floor, going to take it to the rack and lay it up and in. Ty Dalton with his first point to the ball game. The sophomore has two, and the Huskies are back up by four. 9.33 yet to go till halftime as Page dribbles it up. He tries to bounce pass it by DeBose, but he kicked it instead. Ian will draw the whistle, and on the kick ball, it'll be Lamar's basketball side out across the way. T.J. Atwood back out on the floor, inbounds it to Page way out top. He's been in there since Hunter picked up his second foul, and we've got a whistle away from the basketball. And this is going to be on the Huskies. It'll be on Jackson Stent, and suddenly Jackson quickly has two fouls with 9.20 to go. And that's going to bring Ben Yoloko off the bench. 
As Jackson now with two will have to sit down. He joins Ed Hart on the bench with two fouls. And the Huskies lead still at four as Page gets it inbounds out top to Garth. Right side angle, he goes to Atwood, back to Page, left angle to Garth, and he has his pass tipped and stripped by Braxton Bonds. Up ahead with the outlet to Dalton. He'll take it to the free throw circle, double teamed, looks for help, finds DuBose, pump fake on a three. Tried to drive, cut off, and now he'll set it up out beyond the arc. Takes it in, still plenty of time on the shot clock. Leave it for Yuloko on the baseline. Nice feed from Ian. And Ben gets his first point to the ball game. With 8.44 to go, it's now a six point lead again. Largest lead has been eight for HBU here in the first half. Page back, right side, he goes across court to Garth, left angle, they play out beyond the arc, into the corner, Judy left wide open for a three and it's short. Pulled down by Bonds and Braxton will take off the other way. He's gonna leave it for Dalton, a three rattles off, won't stay down. Rebound pulled down by McKenzie and we're gonna get a foul, no, we're gonna get a tied ball underneath. And the alternating possession will give it to Lamar with 8.15 to go. Judy and Page in the backcourt. DeBose will meet Page. And they'll come across the midcourt stripe together. And here's a bounce pass stolen away by Bonds. Braxton with another steal, forcing the action up the floor. He'll set up left angle, almost lost the dribble, but keeps it. Picked up by Page, screen from Yuloko, tried a bounce pass to Ben, but the ball was kicked by Page. It'll be Huskies basketball on the sideline in front of the Lamar bench. But first, we've got a timeout on the floor. Seven minutes, 52 seconds to go. Huskies have hit three of their last four field goals and have reopened the six-point lead here, 25 to 19, on the Husky Sports Network. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> it's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Shooting percentages still pretty good for both teams. Lamar shooting at 47%, 8 of 17 here. And 11 of 20, the Huskies over 50%, 55% from the floor, and they've got it inbounds out of the timeout. Lynch Daniels back out on the floor, gets it to McKenzie. He goes right side to Bonds. Feed it in the blocks to Yoloko. Back to the basket, and he's going to be bumped from behind by Zikor, and that'll be the first foul on Josh and Zikor. Number six on the Cardinals here in the first half. So now both teams with six team fouls, and the next foul on either side puts the opponent in the bonus the rest of the way with 7.42 to go. Bonds to the baseline, gets it inbounds to Lynch Daniels. Ollie to the middle, going to try to go by Garth. Almost lost it, and he does try to put it up. It didn't hit glass or rim, and Ollie tried to tip it back, save it inbounds, but that's a travel, and he turns it over with 7.35 to go. Seven turnovers, or check it now, six turnovers for the Huskies, six for Lamar as well, a little trapping defense in the backcourt. And Atwood gets it into the forecourt. He goes strong up over Yoloko, and he'll lay it off the glass and in for two. 
And that cuts it back down to four. Here's a three from the corner. Left side for Oliver Lance Daniels. And he answers quickly to take the lead back up to seven. Huskies now are three of nine from the three-point line here in the first half. Cardinals out beyond the arc. Page to Garth, back to Page. McKenzie pops out top to pick him up. Man-to-man, -man, tight defense here, way out beyond the arc. Page dribbles to the middle, leave it left side for Atwood. He goes back to the center of the floor. To Judy, right corner, out on the wing to Garth. Dribbles to the left elbow, gets a shot off before the buzzer, but it's off to Mark, and the rebound cleared by Braxton Bonds. He seems rejuvenated here in these last couple of games and has an assist, or almost an assist, to Yoloko underneath. Knocked away from Ben, or he would have had an easy layup on the nice dish from Braxton. 6.31 to go. It'll be Huskies basketball. Plenty of time on the shot clock. 22 seconds yet to go. As they get it inbounds, Bonds to Yoloko, out top to DeBose. Spin around in the paint, has it swatted away by Atwood, but right back to Ian. This time he's fouled, no call, and it's knocked away. And give it off to the Cardinals. It's Graylin Easter who's checked in. He tries to get it up, and it won't go. McKenzie takes it away. Give it off to DeBose. He'll drive in left side, comes up short off the iron, and Easter clears it again. Up ahead to Page, going to fire up a three. Right angle misses everything, and the Huskies will let it go out of bounds. And the fans remind Page that he did not find rim or glass that time with 5.57 to go. Lamar just one of seven of their last seven three-point field goal attempts two for eight overall here in the first or check it they are one for seven overall so 545 to go as the Huskies bring it up and they've got a seven point lead McKenzie left angle looks for help Yoloko pops out high to take the feed now he finds McKenzie does Lynch Daniels underneath and Phillip under the basket, left side goes off the glass and in for two, and the lead's up to nine. Largest lead of the first half here. Page will take it inside. Penzikor, and it's partially blocked. I think Ben got a hand on that. Outlet up ahead. Dalton to McKenzie. Can't finish. Rebound is followed up by Bonds, and McKenzie with the third look. None of them would go, and Lamar will clear. Close that time to be in a double-digit lead. The Huskies drop back on defense, so still leading 30-21. Bounce pass, Page and Loda and Zekor, and this time he'll fight through Dalton and Yoloko and lay it in over the front rim for two, 30-23. Bonds gets a screen from Yoloko, drives in into the corner with the pass to McKenzie. He goes out high to Dalton. Dalton will take it in right side, and he's going to be called for the travel. Tried to put it up over Atwood, but lifted up the pivot foot. McKenzie's going to check out. Jalen Gates will check in for him. So it's Lynch Daniels, Gates, Bonds, Dalton, and Yoloko, the five on the floor for Coach Cottrell right now. We've got a whistle away from the basketball and an offensive foul going to be called on Easter, I believe. His first. And that is the seventh foul on Lamar. Offensive fouls do not draw free throws, but the Huskies will be in the bonus the rest of the way here with 4.20 to go. HBU still with 16 fouls on their side of the ledger. Into the left corner, Ollie gets it to Jalen Gates. Jay is going to be bumped by Easter, and there's a foul that will send Gates to the free throw line with 4.11 left. Easter will check out. Garth checks back in. Christian Barrett has checked in for the first time. He's a 6'6 junior transfer from Jacksonville College up in East Texas. Houston native. He's in for the first time as Judy goes to the bench. First free throw from Gates hits the mark. He'll have one more. Jalen for the season. 
Averaging 81% at the free throw line and gets the second one, rattles out, won't stay down, but we've got a whistle and a lane violation called on Lamar. I think they called Atwood for getting into the lane too soon. And so wipe that one out. Jalen will get another free throw. Here's his second attempt, and this one drops down through. So two for two officially for Gates from the line on that trip to the free throw stripe. Makes the most of it, and the Huskies are back up by nine, and they go back to some full court pressure. Barrett inbounds the ball, gets it to Holmes. Michael Kalawale has checked in as well. He wears number one for Lamar. Holmes feeds it down low, and Zekor into the paint, and he shuffled the feet. Looking for a foul, trying to back it in on Uloco, and Ben just kind of let him back in to no pressure, and he walked, and that'll stop the clock with 3.52 to go. So a back and forth affair. We've seen it as low as two. The Huskies, though, claimed a 5-4 lead early. They haven't surrendered it since and have a 32-20 lead with 3.52 left. We'll take a timeout on the Husky Sports Network. You can always count on Houston Federal Credit Union to be there for you because once a member, always a member. Take advantage of all their products and services to help you on all your financial milestones, such as purchasing your first car, planning your dream wedding, buying a home, and planning for retirement. Stop by any of their convenient locations or visit their website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. I am strong. I won't give up. I put my heart into the game. I learned from my mistakes. Focus. Determination. Confidence. I trust my gut. No limits. Preparation. Dedication. Leadership. I want to make my team and family proud. Be an inspiration for other girls who like sports. Join, Join the, the movement. movement. Under Armour. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. I'm Robin. Back here at Sharp Gym, Lonnie King along with you. 3.45 to go as the Huskies have the basketball out of the timeout, leading by nine. Their defense has started to pay off the last few minutes. Lamar has just made three of their last nine field goal attempts. Bonds with the basketball for the Huskies. Going to drive in, puts it up. Comes off the iron, though. Won't stay down. And the rebound's going to be cleared by Kalawale. He gets it off to Holmes, drives in right side, and he'll lay it off the glass for two. And that takes it back down to seven, 32-25, as we roll down toward the three-minute mark. Cross-court pass from Gates to Lynch Daniels, and everybody froze, and Ollie just took it right to the rack and lays it in. Here's a little floater off the glass from Kalawale, and he gets his points off the buck, off the window from the right side, and it's back down to seven. Into the paint, feed it to Lynch Daniels, misses everything, but Yoloko there to try and put it back. Won't go off the iron, and it's cleared this time by Holmes. Up ahead, finds Garth, left side, a three short, and a rebound pulled down by Ollie. And this time he'll hold it up and ease it up into the forecourt with two and a half minutes to go. Slow things down with the seven-point lead, and they'll set it up. Lynch Daniels goes to Dalton, right side to Bonds. Bonds out high to Gates. He'll try to fire a three, has it partially blocked by Holmes, and it's going to be pulled out of midair by Kalawali. Feed it down low, and there's going to be a walk. Turnover on Barrett as he looked back to see where the pressure was going to come from and moved his feet as he did so. Had an easy look underneath if he'd have just gone straight to the rack, but instead he'll turn it over back to the Huskies. That's nine turnovers now in the first half for the Cardinals. The Huskies with seven of their own. Bonds up the floor, out top, leave it for Gates. He'll drive right baseline, going to be bumped as he goes to the rack, hits the deck, but he'll go to the free throw line to shoot a pair. The foul's going to be called on Judy, who checked back in. 
And Gates back to the free throw line where he's two of two tonight. Jay averages over 11 points per game off the bench this season for the Huskies. Unable to get it going early on here tonight from the field and misses the first free throw here, but he does have a couple of points on two free throws earlier. 156 to go till halftime here, and he gets the second one to go. One out of two. Ian DeBose is going to check back in, and Gates will check out with three points all from the line. An eight-point game again, 35-27. Huskies with the lead, trying to keep that as they go into the locker room at the break. Holmes picked up by Bonds as he comes across the stripe. Takes it left angle, out top to Judy. Feet it right side. Call a Wale, drives the right baseline, won't go. But Barrett underneath, going to get the rebound, put it up, and he'll get it high off the glass, and it rolls around and goes down through. 35-29. DeBose triple team goes cross court to a wide open. Lynch Daniels, a three, misses everything. And the rebound cleared by Barrett. Up ahead, Garth on the run. Can't get the layup to go, but Judy walking in the paint. No call, and he's going to lay it in off the iron for two. Wow, it looked like he drug the pivot foot down deep, but they said no. And Bonds back the other way, tries to go with an acrobatic reversal. Misses the iron, and it's tipped out of bounds off of Yoloko. It'll be Lamar basketball. They've now scored four in a row with the chance to cut it back down to two or possibly one on this possession. And we've got 60 seconds left till halftime. Holmes to Judy, drives in, backs in on Yuloko, spins around, won't go, and Dalton with the rebound for the Huskies. Outlet to DeBose, and he'll bring it up. And Coach Cottrell wants a timeout as Ian gets him into the forecourt. They want Philip McKenzie back out on the floor. And he'll take a timeout with 43.6 seconds to go. 30-second timeout, so we'll hang on to it right here. Huskies by four and with the basketball. Stick with us coming up at halftime. We will take a look at the first half stats. Also look at... Other games around the league tonight, conference openers for most of the teams in the Southland. Also, Donna Finney's women's squad is going up against Lamar tonight, the women's team from Beaumont over at the Montaigne Center, and that one is in the first half. We'll give you an update at the halftime break on that game. Straight ahead on the Huskies halftime report, so we invite you to stick around. We'll get you set for the second half. Still 43.6 to go here in the first half. McKenzie does check back in. And Dalton looks to get it inbounds, and Lance Daniels doesn't touch it in the forecourt, so he can go into the backcourt and run it down. Picked up by Garth as he comes back across the line. Leave it out top for Dalton. Puts it on the floor, drives down right side. Stops on the baseline, turn around, little dream shake, won't go. Tipped right back to Dalton, and he'll take it in and lay it off the glass for two. Ty Dalton with four now, down to 18 seconds to go, 37-31. Here's Judy goes up, and they're going to say he's fouled. Huskies thought they had a clean block. They're going to call it on Ben Yoloko. 15.9 seconds to go. It'll send Judy to the free throw line. Seventh team foul on the Husky, but a shooting foul. And Judy's first free throw is too strong. Shot clock is off. The Huskies will have the final possession if they want it after this free throw from Judy. Page checks in and Holmes will check out. Yoloko will check out for the Huskies and Bonds will check in for him. They don't want Ben to pick up a quick, cheap foul here before halftime. So Braxton back out on the floor for the final 16 seconds. Now Huskies shift positions on the blocks. And Judy is ready to shoot the second free throw. Misses that one as well. And McKenzie clears the glass for the Huskies. And they'll bring it up. Final 10 seconds here till halftime. DeBose 
Steady going to take it in, drives in left side, high off the glass, won't go the rebound. McKenzie's going to be fouled, and Barrett will draw it, and Phil will go to the line with just under two seconds to go, 1.5. Fortuitous move there as DuBose didn't get the runner to drop, but McKenzie with good position underneath with the offensive glass, and he'll get free throws because of it. Phil's first one, though, will not stay down. One more to come. That was the 10th foul of the half on the Cardinals. Kind of a moot point now, but it puts the Huskies in the double bonus. So McKenzie with two free throws here, and the second one is good. Seven-point lead, two seconds to go. Page will throw up a prayer at halftime. It will not be answered, and the Huskies will take a seven-point advantage into the locker room here at the break. 38-31 is our score. The Huskies have opened up a seven-point lead at Sharp Gym. Come back. We'll have the Huskies halftime report for you straight ahead on the Huskies Sports Network. <laughs> DNA Husky Sports Network. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. The last thing anyone needed was another sub shop. They needed a better one. We built Firehouse Subs on quality and quantity. And I'm the quality. Why my quantity? Are you kidding? Try our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, mm. Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese. Yeah, all served steaming hot on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. On him. It's on him. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. The body is incredibly powerful. It's so nimble and fluid, but sometimes we push it too far. That's when you need the strength of Memorial Hermann and our body of affiliated orthopedic specialists. With our renowned Ironman Sports Medicine Institute, they not only get your body back to where it was, they get it to go further. It's what makes us more than just hospitals. We are a body of experts. Memorial Hermann, advancing health. Tammy and I have been going steady since high school. Tammy and Tommy, two peas in a pod, as they say. We have all the same friends. We like all the same things. I mean, we practically even have the same name. But there's one thing we could just never agree on. Soda. <sighs> I have been begging him all these years to just try Pepsi, and I knew he would change his tune. Yeah, yeah. So, finally, I had him take the Pepsi taste challenge. And go on, tell him what you told me, Tommy. I'm a Pepsi man. Mmm. Right? Gosh, isn't Pepsi so good? I tell you what, I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. Me neither. It's so crisp and refreshing and bubbly. Like me. Like you. I'm always right. She's always right. <laughs> All across the South, people are choosing the great taste of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi Taste Challenge and let your taste decide. It would be great if human beings were great at being human. And if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men. It would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known. And if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown. It would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word. It would be awesome if we shared everything and being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man and the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. Do you know
know how fast you were going, son? Call me Ed. Do you know how fast you were going, Ed? You mean exactly? Yes, exactly. No, not exactly. How fast? Fast. Fast, sir? You were going very fast. Fast is my job, officer. Fast is your job? Yes, sir. What kind of job? I deliver, sir. What do you deliver? The world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. I thought Jimmy John's had the world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. Jimmy John's does have the world's greatest gourmet sandwiches. So you deliver for Jimmy John's? I deliver for Jimmy John's. So do you always deliver fast? I always deliver fast. How fast? I deliver subs so fast you freak. It's not smart to freak a cop, son. You didn't order Jimmy John's sub, sir. So if I did order a Jimmy John's sub, when would I get it? Now. What if I don't want it now? Then call later. Or I can pick it up myself. Or you can pick it up yourself. Because I'm pretty fast, too. I'm sure you are, sir. Very fast. I believe you, sir. Faster than you. No way, sir. Way faster. In your dreams. You dissing me, son. No, sir. I'm polite. Fast and polite. Very polite and very, very fast. Is that a challenge, son? No, sir. It's a fact. Let's burn rubber, kid. It wouldn't be fair. Why not? You've got a fully blown V8 Camaro with slicks and headers. So? I've got a 10-speed bike. I'll let you off with a warning. Jimmy John Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. What's it mean for the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, Local 716, to send someone to your job site? It means electricians that pass basic trigonometry, calculus, or algebra are sent to your job site. It means electricians familiar with OSHA compliance are sent to your job site. It means IBW electricians made a conscious decision to improve their life and the lives of others. What does it mean? It means everything. To be the best, hire the best. The time is now to hire IBEW. At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. At Holiday Inn Express, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to contain yourself at our breakfast bar. Morning, egg white omelet. Sup, lady bacon. Fruit. There it is. But we can guarantee that you'll get the best price when you book with us. Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. So. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. <laughs> It's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. <laughs> when you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HVU Athletics. This is Ron Koschel. You're listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. And welcome back in to Sharp Gym, the Sharp Tank on the campus of Houston Baptist University. A rainy Wednesday night here in the Houston area, but heating things up here in the gym. The Huskies with a 38-31 lead at the midway point of our conference opener for the 2018-2019 season over the Lamar Cardinals. Through the first half, the Huskies Shot 43%. They kind of cooled off over the last four minutes of the first half, though. Uh, just two of their last 10 field goal attempts found the range. They were up over 50% for much of the first 20 minutes before cooling down. They wind up 15 of 35 overall from the floor. Meanwhile, Lamar was uh, fairly consistent throughout the first 20. They wind up at 45%, 14 of 31 here at the half. They're one for eight outside the three-point line, just 12% there. Huskies are three of 11, 27%. These teams haven't relied a lot on the outside shooting tonight. They've both gone into the paint for a lot of their scoring. Huskies with 22 points in the paint. Lamar with 24 of their 31 inside the uh, lane for their totals tonight. From the free throw line, the Huskies are 5 of 8, 63% so far, and 2 of 5, 40% at the stripe for Lamar. The Huskies have out-rebounded the Cardinals, 22 to 18. They've got a 5-2 edge on the offensive boards and a 17-16 edge on the defensive boards. Phillip McKenzie and Ian DeBose lead the way for HBU with four boards apiece. All of Ian's have been on the defensive end, and Phillip has split his four, two and two, two offensive boards, two defensive boards as well. 
Huskies forced nine turnovers for the Cardinals here in the first half, and they put in nine points off those nine turnovers. Lamar forced the Huskies into seven turnovers, and uh, they only managed five points off those seven points through the first 20 minutes. Bench scoring, not a major factor for either side, but it's even up, 9-9. Nine, nine. And you look at the breakdown for the Huskies. They've gotten scoring from three guys who've come in off the bench. They've gone nine deep here. Jackson Stent played a couple of minutes, picked up two quick fouls, and had to come back off the floor. He did not score in his two minutes plus. But um, <clears throat> Ben Uloco off the bench with two. Ty Dalton, almost 11 minutes of floor time here in the first half. Some good minutes for Ty early in this ballgame. He's got four off the pines tonight. And Jalen Gates with three, all of his three coming at the free throw line, three of four at the stripe for Jay Gates tonight. So those are the nine points for the Huskies. Meanwhile, two for Christian Barrett, four for Edwin Judy, three for Laquarius Page for Lamar off the bench. They've actually gone six deep off the bench tonight, 11 deep overall in the first 20 minutes for Tick Price. And uh, he uh, has seen uh, uh, Jordan Foster, Graylin Easter and Michael Kalawale get some floor time through the first 20 minutes off the bench tonight, but none of those guys have scored. Leading scorer in the ball game at this point is Ian DeBose. He's got 11 to go along with his four rebounds. He also has three assists in the first 20 minutes. Leading scorer for Lamar is Josh Nzikor. He's got 10, just one rebound, two turnovers for Nzikor. He also has a blocked shot through the first 20. On the scoreboard for the Huskies, DeBose is followed by Phillip McKenzie, who's got seven, including a free throw right at the end of the first half that gave the Huskies their seven-point lead. Oliver Lynch Daniels has contributed five, four apiece from Braxton Bonds and Ty Dalton, two for Edward Hart, um, and then the rest is two from Ben Uloco and three from Jalen Gates off the bench. So the Huskies, through 20, have a seven-point lead, 38-31. to 31. We'll take another timeout when we come back. Take a look around the Southland Conference. Also take a look at what's going on in Beaumont tonight. Donna Finney's women's team opening up their conference season in Beaumont against the Lamar Lady Cardinals. We'll have that for you straight ahead on the Huskies Halftime Report. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Raising Cane's, we believe in one love, quality chicken finger meals. But creating one love is no simple task. Everything has to be served hot and fresh, not just hot. We use only 100% premium chicken tenderloins, guaranteeing a 0% chance of leftovers. We insist on the best ingredients for our fries, like potatoes. And, well, we can keep talking quality, or you can just eat it. Raising Cane's, one love. Coming to you in Living Cola. Cola from the wonderful folks who put the R in Cola. I didn't believe I could do it. The weight seemed too heavy. My competitors were too fast. I lacked motivation, and then I found the Hulk t shirt. 
I transformed myself and believed that I could conquer the competition. Now everybody takes me serious because I demand them to. If I can do it, you can do it. Under Armour Alter Ego. Transform yourself. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. And back here at Sharp Gym, just about set for the second half. But while we've got a minute, let's take a look at what's going on around the Southland Conference tonight. Conference opener for 12 of the 13 teams in the league. And one game has already gone final. The Huskies' next opponent, the New Orleans Privateers, opened up in Abilene tonight up at Moody Coliseum against Abilene Christian. And Abilene Christian defends the home floor, 68-58 the final there. In the opener for both those teams, uh, New Orleans will head home to host the Huskies on Saturday afternoon. This is one of three games. Ours is one of three games at the half right now. Texas A&M Corpus Christi at home in Corpus tonight, leading Central Arkansas 42-34. And over in San Antonio, McNeese State on the road with a 41-33 lead over Incarnate Word. Two games in the second half, about eight and a half minutes to go, and Northwestern State Nichols are in a back and forth affair. 60 to 58, the Demons of Northwestern State have a two point lead at the moment. And then in Nacogdoches, SFA is opening up their conference season at home, and they're in a nail biter right now against Southeastern Louisiana. The score there, 36 34, with uh, just under 12 minutes to go in regulation time of that one. Meanwhile, Donna Finney squad is over in Beaumont tonight, opening it up their uh, conference season against the Lady Cardinals of Lamar. And at halftime, that game is 30-22. The Huskies were outscored 17-9 in the first quarter, but played the Lady Cardinals even up at 13 apiece in the second, half, in the second quarter. So it's an eight-point deficit at the break, and we'll keep you updated on that one here in the second half. But we're ready to go, and the Huskies have it to start the final 20. And Bonds gives it to DeBose. They play right side, feed it down, low blocks to Ed Hart. Back to the basket, backs down on Zekor. Moves around on the baseline, and he's going to be called for a three-second. Had that foot planted in the blue down underneath. And just did not have anywhere to go with it. Here's a pass way up ahead in Zekor, and somebody went to sleep. And he's left all alone and dunks it down for two. Coach Cottrell not happy about that up off the bench. Biting his lip, though. And here's a steal by Nick Garth. He's going to throw it off of Braxton Bonds. And they're going to say it went out of bounds off of Garth or possibly B.J. Holmes, but it's going to be Huskies basketball. Now a little housekeeping to do as Garth hit the deck, trying to come up with the steal there. Stops the clock with 19.21 to go. We're ready now. And Brent Dugas gets the ball to Braxton Bonds, and he'll look to inbound it. We've got a foul away from the basketball. Going to be called on Nick Garth, trying to shield Oliver Lynch Daniels, who was trying to cut through to get open. Garth doesn't think so, but Ryan McDaniel has the call, and it'll be Huskies basketball. That's the first personal on Garth, the first foul on either team here to start the second half. DeBose, right angle. Way out beyond the arc, drives in on Atwood, floats it up from the elbow, pulled up about 15 feet away, and drops it down through for his first points of the second half. He's got 13 now, and the Huskies are back up to a seven-point advantage, 40-33. Atwood, bounce pass inside, and Zekor tries to take it in over hard, and he'll find the range down deep. Got deep into the paint. Cuts it back down to five, and Zekor with the first four here for Lamar to start the final 20. Ed out top. One dribble to the left angle, leaves it for Lynch Daniels. He'll float it up from the left wing, won't go, and a rebound, a foul on the rebound. They're going to get in Zekor underneath. At 
least that seems to be the in initial indication. Now they're going to send both teams to their respective benches. Trent Dews and Brent Dugas were talking over something. Now Ryan McDaniel, the third official, will join the conversation. And I don't know. We'll see if they're going to come to the monitor to look at something. I think they're calling a double foul here. We'll see what the exact call is, but they're going to take a look at the monitor for clarification here on that previous call. Oliver Lynch Daniels went up for a short range jumper from the left angle. It came up short and the ball came down underneath. They call Ed Hart for his third and Josh and Zikor his second. They've looked at the replay and now Dugas and Dews talking things over. They'll walk back across court to relay the information to the scorer's table and to both benches. Common foul is the final decision here, so no flagrant either way. On a double foul, it's like a jump ball, alternating possession, and it's going to belong to Lamar. Ready to go now, 18.29 to go. Everything sorted out. Couple more fouls on the board. First foul on the Huskies here in the second half, second on Lamar, but the Cardinals bring it up the floor. Hunter dribbles out top, McKenzie picks him up. Right side to Holmes, into the paint he goes, leave it on the baseline for Atwood, kick it back out, Hunter for a three, top of the arc, rattles off, won't go, and Lynch Daniels clears for the Huskies. Gets it to DeBose, outlet to McKenzie, almost lost it, saves it back to Ian. ID looks for help, going to find McKenzie, but he can't control and stolen by Garth. Take it up and lay it in off the window for two. Got a little sloppy with the ball handling there. And the Cardinals come up with an easy layup. Back down to three, 17-40 uh, to go in the ball game. The Huskies now trying to get it inside, they go to Hart, and he's going to be fouled. I think they're going to get in Zikor for his third. Count the bucket, they say. Give him the bucket. And they're going to call Hunter instead of in Zikor. That'll be the third on Hunter. And Hart will go to the line for a plus one opportunity. So a nice move by Ed in the paint. Gets the bucket to go. Just his... First points of the ball game and adds the free throw, rattles around, but it drops down through. And the lead is back up to six, 43-37 with 17-34 left. Aquarius Page is checked in. Hunter with three fouls will head back to the bench. Page will pop out top, take a handoff from Atwood. He can't control, but saves it. Down low to Enzikor, tries to drive in on Hart, and he steps on the baseline. Good defense by Edward Hart. Enzikor trying to draw the foul or get by him to the rack. And instead, Josh forces him out of bounds. It'll be Huskies basketball, 17-15 to go, and a six-point lead as they bring it up. Vaughn sets up right angle, gets a screen from Ed Hart. Almost a steal with a double team. Feeds it inside to McKenzie, and he walks. Phil hesitated. He was in the paint and wanted to pass it out, but nobody was open in his sight line, and so slid the pivot foot, turns it back over, and the Huskies will drop back on defense as Holmes will bring it up across the stripe. 
Bonds picks him up out high. Angles to the right side. Looks back to the left and feeds it to Garth out top. Drives in. Floats one up from the elbow. Won't go. The rebound is tipped away out top. It's going to be off to Huskies. And so Atwood can go into the backcourt and bring it back up. He'll get it to Holmes. And it's stolen away. Try to pass to Garth. And Bonds takes it away instead. Braxton leaves it for DeBose. Open for a three. Off to Mark. The rebound controlled by Zekor. And he'll clear it to Holmes. Down low to Atwood. Back to Nzikor flashing through the paint. He walked. And that'll be a turnover back to the Huskies with 16.25 to go. So we've been a couple of trips up to the floor, up the floor both ways, and neither team has been able to capitalize. It's still a six-point game since the free throw by Edward Hart. Both teams are one for nine on their last nine three-point attempts. That's the sum total of three-point attempts for Lamar in this game. The Huskies started out hitting two of their first three, but they've gone one of nine since. Here's Hart trying to feed it to Lynch. Daniels tipped and stolen away by Garth. Tenzikor on the baseline finds Page, and he misses a point-blank layup. Hart with the clearance. And he'll leave it for DuBose, and they want to settle it down and work it back up the floor. Ian, with the steady hand, takes it to the right side. Turns his back on Atwood and will bring it back to the middle. Pump fake on a three. Bounce pass into the blocks to Hart. Tries to back it down, and it's tipped away by Holmes. Off to Atwood. Leave it for Garth. Fire a quick trigger three, and he got it this time. Garth talking to Oliver Lynch Daniels as he heads back up the floor. Proud of his achievement there. And Coach Cottrell wants a timeout with 15.26 to go. I don't think he's real happy with the ball protection these last few trips up the floor. Wants to talk things over with his team. This will be a coach's timeout, but it will turn into a media timeout with 15.26 left. And we will take the break on the Husky Sports Network. At Memorial Hermann, we're many parts working in harmony performing more brain and spinal surgeries than anyone in Houston, conducting groundbreaking research at our Mischer Neuroscience Institute, establishing the region's largest network of certified stroke centers. Some might say this makes for an accomplished performance, but to us, it's all in a day's work. Memorial Hermann. Breakthroughs every day. Going to school at Houston Baptist University was an excellent choice. As the official credit union of HBU, Houston Federal Credit Union is focused on helping you to continue to make great choices. HFCU will meet all your financial needs by providing the personal attention and variety of services you deserve. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Huskies have been outscored 9-5 to start the second half here. They're in a scoring drought over the last 208 of the second half here. They have not put a point on the board since the free throw by Ed Hart. And the Cardinals just have the three-pointer from Nick Garth, but they've cut it down to a three-point game. Huskies basketball out of the timeout. 17 on the shot clock as Lynch Daniels dribbles left angle beyond the arc. Out top to DeBose. Yuloko has checked in, tries to set a screen, and DeBose will take it to the left elbow and float it up and in for two. Ian with 15, the Huskies by five, and that breaks the drought at about two and a half minutes. They had one of those back in the first half, it kind of allowed Lamar to creep back into this game, and let's see if the Huskies can stretch it back out here. Atwood drives in, cut off by McKenzie, takes it to the middle, float it up, and they're going to call McKenzie for a foul. Shot won't go, but Phil will send him to the free throw line. But with 14.51 to go, we've got a media timeout here at the Sharp Tank. And we'll take another break. 45-40, Huskies with the lead on the Husky Sports Network. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. 
all for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Every visit to Raising Cane's begins with a moment of truth. What to have? Six delicious, fresh, never ever frozen premium chicken fingers? Four chicken fingers? Or perhaps three delectable chicken fingers? It's a tough one. Ah, we haven't even gotten to the whole coleslaw crinkle fried conundrum of deliciousness. Yeah, take your time, sister. We understand. Raising Cane's, one love. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. Both teams shooting well here to start the second half. Four of seven from the floor for Lamar, 57%. The Huskies, two fewer shots, but they made three of their first five for 60%. T.J. Atwood will be at the free throw line here after the foul by Philip McKenzie just before the timeout. It was the second personal on Phil, and the first free throw from Atwood is off the back iron. No good. One more to come. Atwood here at the line tonight. That was his first attempt, makes the second one. One out of two, Braxton Bonds will check in. Jalen Gates has checked in as well. Heading to the bench for a breather is Oliver Lynch Daniels. So we've got Bonds, DeBose, McKenzie, Gates, and Yoloko, the five on the floor for Coach Cottrell. Gates with the basketball, left eye, side, gets it out top to Ian DeBose. Feeds it down low to Yoloko, left alone, and he'll lay it up and in. Nice find by Ian for the assist, and the finish by Ben. Back up to six, 47-40, 14-20 to go. And Zekor, top of the arc, tries to kick it down out on the wing to Page. Feeds it to Holmes, takes it into the paint, floats it up, comes off the iron, and the rebound cleared by the worm. McKenzie with the board, gets it off to DeBose. 14 minutes to go. Huskies up by six, trying to win this conference opener for the 2018-2019 season here on the home floor. McKenzie will drive down. He's grabbed, and they're going to call a jump ball. Well, they're going to say V.J. Holmes got a hand on the basketball. And McKenzie trying to go up with the pressure of Holmes's hand downward on the basketball. Prevented McKenzie from getting to the rack. But it's going to be Huskies basketball on the alternating possession. So they'll go to the baseline. And we've got a whistle and a foul going to be called on Nick Garth. And that's his second personal. Third team foul. Check it. Fourth team foul of the second half on the Cardinals. Jackson Stent uses the opportunity to check in for the Huskies. McKenzie will get a breather. And Bonds gets it inbounds to Ian DeBose. Take it to the right angle, feed it inside to Yoloko, and he's going to be fouled by Page. Aquarius Page with his second. So now they've got four guys out there with two fouls apiece. Hunter is on the bench with three. 13.44 to go. That's the fifth team foul on the Cardinals. And Zekor now having to restring the shoelace on his left shoe. So they'll give him a minute to take care of that business before the Huskies will inbound it with 13.44 to go. Gates takes the feed from Bonds, puts up a quick trigger three, won't go, and Ian DeBose is going to see it knocked out of bounds by T.J. Atwood. Nice hustle by Atwood. He hit the deck, went hard to the floor, trying to save it for Lamar. Couldn't come up with it, and then DeBose did a good job to screen him from being able to recover. And it goes out of bounds back to the Huskies. Here's a feed inside DeBose. Take it in. Get it to go. And he's fouled. And he'll go to the line for the and one. 
It's going to be on Atwood, his first. Number six on the team, but a plus one opportunity for DeBose at the line to get the Huskies to the half century mark, and he does. Ian has 18 points now, 13.30 to go. The Huskies by nine, 50-41. Garth with a quick answer from the three-point line at the right corner, and it's back down to six, 50-44. to 44. Nick Garth with 14, and Zekor, and Zekor also has 14 for the Cardinals. DeBose dribbles out top. Left angle to Gates. Hasn't found the range from the line tonight, but now he does. That maybe will free up Jay Gates. He's got six, 13 minutes to go. The Huskies back up by nine. You'd love to see Jay hit it, heat it up from outside the arc. Page drives in right side, tries a cross-court pass, almost stolen by Gates. And Atwood's going to travel as he tried to put it on the floor. Moved the feet before the ball hit the deck. And that'll turn it back over to HBU. 12.49 to go in regulation. Nine-point advantage. Huskies trying to take it to double digits, and Bonds is going to go strong to the rack. Knocked out of bounds by Atwood. Judy's going to check in. Atwood will get a breather. He and Holmes now are going to switch assignments as Judy will pick up Jackson Stent. Zekor... Shuffles over to pick up Yoloko, and Holmes will pick up DuBose, and Ian has it, left angle. Drives by him, takes it into the paint, kick it out on the wing to Stent. Pump fake on a three, take it to the elbow, float it up off the mark, and Page will clear the glass for Lamar. Long outlet to Garth, takes it to the middle of the floor and leave it off for Holmes. Thought about a three, back to Garth. He wanted it, going to drive in instead, leave it on the baseline for Page, misses the layup, and Yoloko clears for the Huskies. Off to Bonds, and he'll bring it back up. Gets by Page, take it in, off the window, and the follow by DeBose. Ian with the jam to finish it off. He's got 20, and the Huskies up by 11. Nice move by Bonds to force the action. His shot wouldn't stay down, but Ian followed it up with the layup, or with the dunk. And here's Holmes tries to take it in, and then Zekor will clean up the glass for him and put it back in off the window. And it's a 55-46 advantage for the Huskies, and we've got a foul on Nick Garth. And he is chatting as he heads to the bench. That'll be his third foul, the seventh team foul. And it stops the clock with 11.42 to go. Brings us to another timeout here. Our under-12 timeout, the Huskies with a nine-point lead as we take it to the break on the Husky Sports Network. What's on your mind, kid? Make it fast. I'd like to work here at Jimmy John's World's Greatest Gourmet Sandwich Shop, sir. Why do you want to work at Jimmy John's, kid? I'm perfect for Jimmy John's. Doing what? Delivery. Delivery? Delivery. We deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. That's what I heard. What'd you hear? You deliver pretty fast here at Jimmy John's. Then you heard right. I'm a fast study, sir. You know the Jim John's slogan? The Jimmy John's slogan. Jim John's slogan is sub so fast you'll freak. Sub so fast you'll freak is a swell slogan, sir. When people call for a Jimmy John's sandwich, they want it fast. Then I'm your man, sir. How so? Because I'm fast. Fast at what? Fast at everything. Can you deliver fast? I can deliver fast. How fast? I can run a 440 and 220. Minutes? No seconds. That's fast. You deliver before? I delivered newspapers before. Were you fast? Very fast. How fast? People got tomorrow's paper today. That's fast. So do I have the job? Not so fast. How do I know you're not just some fast talker? I can get your references. When? Now. These are good references. Thank you. But at Jimmy John's, you got to be more than fast. More than fast. you got to be polite. Fast and polite. Fast and polite. I can do fast and polite. Okay, give me some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, I thought it over. When can you start? Now. Now it's good. What's your name, kid? Stefan Amalabadopoulos. Too long. How about Ed? That's fine. Welcome aboard, Ed. Jimmy John's Subs, an official sponsor of HBU Athletics. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Women's basketball conference opener over in Beaumont tonight against the Lamar Lady Cardinals. Donna Finney's squad still trailing there midway through the third quarter, 4.43 to go, and they're down by 6, 34-28, but a close game. And Jalen Gates at the line apparently... Nick Garth drew a technical foul as he left the floor. We told you he was giving Ryan McDaniel a little bit of chatter as he came off the floor. He's got four fouls now. 
as he picked up the personal and then the technical foul to head to the bench. Or no, they're just going to charge him with the technical as the lone foul that time. So the Huskies get free throws there from Jalen Gates, and now he's going to fire up a three. Won't go, and the rebound tipped by Stent, but right to Zekor. Huskies by 11 as they drop back on defense. To the baseline, it is Cole Wale, and he's going to put it in for his first points from the right baseline. And it's back down to nine, 57-48. Here's Bonds going to go in. His shot halfway down wouldn't stay. And Kalawale clears it up ahead to Holmes. He's going to take it in on DeBose, leave it on the baseline. Blocked by DeBose. Judy tried to take it up, and Ian threw a quadruple team. Put it up. It won't go, but Ian will go to the line. And his teammates hustle over to help him up. As Ian was surrounded by four red jerseys, followed his block with a coast-to-coast move, and now he'll try to make it pay off with a couple of free throws here. What can you say about the effort by DeBose? What can you say about the effort by the Huskies as a team tonight? Great effort to open the conference season. Ian maybe trying to recover a little bit. Didn't have his legs under him on the first free throw. He'll have one more to go. 57-48. DeBose has 20 of the Huskies, 57. And the second free throw spins out, won't stay down. So neither one is good. The Huskies still by nine, though. Under 11 minutes left. Hunter's back out on the floor with three fouls. And unless he gets into deeper foul trouble, we're likely to see him the rest of the way. Judy will drop it down with a lob. Then Zeke or he got Yoloko on his hip and had the easy layup off the window. Cuts it back down to seven, 57-50, 10 and a half left. Ty Dalton and Oliver Lynch Daniels at the table, ready to check in on the next stoppage. The Bonds dribbles right to left across the top of the arc. Looks for a screen. Ian sets him up. Back to the middle. Looks inside, but he's going to be called for a travel. Little jump step to try and set himself and look for a pass. And that's a turnover. Gates will check out. Ian will get a breather as well. So Dalton will spell him. And Oliver Lynch Daniels is in for Jay Gates. Huskies by seven. Cardinals let the ball roll into the forecourt to avoid the clock starting. Save a little bit of time there. Hunter tried to bounce pass into the blocks to Nzikor and it's kicked by Bonds. Stops the clock with 10.09 to go. McKenzie's going to check in for Jackson Sten. So Phil joins Dalton, Yoloko, Lynch Daniels, and Bonds as the five on the floor. For the good guys, Hunter right to left. Now back to the middle. Screen from Enzikor. Enzikor wanted the give-and-go feed down into the paint, but he didn't get it. Kalawale instead will take it to the middle. Now he leaves it on the baseline for Judy, and we've got a whistle and a blocking foul underneath. Going to be called on the worm. Philip McKenzie will pick up his third, and that'll be just the third of the second half on HBU. Shooting foul, though. Nope, they're going to say it was on the pass off. So they'll send Hunter to the baseline. And Jordan Hunter will try to inbound it for the Cardinals. He'll feed it, left elbow to Zekor, and he takes it in, puts it up with the right hand. Little floater in the paint over Yoloko, and he cuts it back down to five. And Zekor now with 18 points to lead the way for the Cardinals. Bonds. To the middle, feeds Ollie. He's picked up by Hunter for the Cardinals. Lance Daniel surveys the situation, goes right, I'll check it left side to McKenzie. Cross court, just right of center to Dalton, drives in, feed it out on the wing. McKenzie open for a three, rattles out, won't stay down. Shot clock was winding down. He had a good look, but Hunter clears it for the Cardinals. He'll float it up from inside the arc. That's a two, and it cuts the lead down to three. With nine minutes to go, 57-54. Now you've done a good job of getting and maintaining the lead. You need to finish it off here to close this one out if you're the Huskies. Bonds out top, holds it up. Gets a screen from Yuloko as he goes to the left corner. Dribbles back, send it right side to Lynch Daniels, tipped away. 
by Holmes. Hits the deck, but saved by McKenzie. Oh, high off the window, and it finds the rain. Well, you send the prayers up. Sometimes the answer is no, but sometimes it's yes. Phil's got a yes answer that time. 60-54. Huskies back up by six on the three by Phil off the window. And there's a whistle down low. Yoloko is going to pick up the personal as Enzikor tried to spin around by him. It'll be just the second on Ben. But Ed Hart's going to check back in. He was already at the scorer's table anyway. And Ben will go to the bench. After some hard work against Josh and Zekor, the leading scorer for the Cardinals tonight. On the baseline, the fourth foul on the team for the Huskies here in the second half. Hunter gets it to Kalawale and then gets it right back. Right angle down to 10 seconds on the shot clock. Hunter will drive in, leave it on the baseline, and Zekor jams it down through, and he's going to be fouled. Count the bucket, and Dalton will pick up the personal. That'll be ties first, and it'll stop the clock with 7.53 to go. Brings it back down to a four-point game at the moment, 60-56, to 56, and Josh and Zekor will be at the line, but we've got a timeout on the floor. 7.53 left in this one. Hang on to your hats. We'll see how it completes itself here on the Husky Sports Network. were great at being human and if all of mankind were made up of kind women and kind men it would be wonderful if common knowledge was knowledge commonly known and if the light from being enlightened into every heart was shown it would be glorious if neighbors were neighborly and indifference a forgotten word it would be awesome if we shared everything being greedy was absurd. It would be spectacular if the golden rule was golden to every man. And the good things that we ever did was everything that we can. Treating others like we'd like to be treated has always been our guiding principle. Marriott Houston West Chase, a proud partner of HBU Athletics. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios. 7.53 to go as we welcome you back into the Sharp Tank on this conference opening Wednesday evening here. The Huskies taking on the Lamar Cardinals and Josh and Zikor at the free throw line. Misses the free throw on the plus one attempt. And Ian DeBose will clear it for the Huskies. And Zikor with 22 points, six boards. He's got four turnovers to go along with that. DuBose is double teamed out high. Finds Lynch Daniels, kicks it cross court to Bonds. He'll take it into the paint. Dish it back out on the wing to Ollie. Into the right corner. Bonds thought about a three. Feed it down in the blocks to Hart instead. Spin around, put it up. He's going to be fouled. And that's going to be on Judy, I believe. It is on Edwin Judy. That's the 10th team foul now on the Cardinals. So 7.24 to go, and the Huskies will be in the double bonus the rest of the way. Two free throws on any defensive foul, and Ed Hart hits the first one here. Ed was one for one before that trip to the line. Now two of two. With one more to come, and three for three now. And the lead's back up to six. 62-56. Hart's got five. Huskies lead is six. Seven minutes to go. Here's a pounds pass intended for Enzikor. Swatted away by Hart. Up ahead. It is Bonds to DuBose. Alley oop for the jam. Ian's got 22. And the Huskies are back out in front by eight. Seven minutes exactly to go in this ball game. Hunter in the half court, just inside the midcourt stripe. Angles to the right, picked up by Bonds. Now take it back to the free throw line. 
Leans in, in the paint, and he's going to float it up, and I think they're going to get Braxton for a personal. They will. That's the first foul on Braxton. That's a tough foul to take after some pretty good defense. Braxton's, Braxton's trying to show Brent Dugas what he did, or maybe he's trying to show him what Hunter did to travel. Now a little conversation between the official and the Husky. As Jordan Hunter will go to the free throw line. Hunter tonight, his first free throw attempt. He's got two points on the evening. And now three as he makes the first one here. 64-57, Husky's lead is down to seven. Hunter with one more. And it won't go high off the iron, and DeBose is going to clear it for HBU. He looks over at the bench. Coach Cottrell gives him the play. They'll set it up. DeBose to Bonds, back to Ian. He's double teamed, backs it out, looks for help, finds Braxton Bonds into the left angle, gets it to Lynch Daniels, drives through traffic, going to float it up off the glass, and Ollie with the bucket. Just found his way through traffic. Here's a long outlet up ahead to Enzikor. Nothing to do with it, though, and so he's got to kick it back out. Gets it to Holmes. It goes to Hunter way out top. Lynch Daniels on him. He's going to fire away at a three. Off the iron won't go, but the long rebound comes off to Enzikor. He'll give it back to Holmes with a fresh shot clock, and Holmes will back it out and set it up near the midcourt line. Ian's got him. Marked in the man-to-man -man defense. Feed it to Hunter. Bounce pass down low to Enzikor. Can't finish it off, but he's going to be fouled. It's either going to be on Oliver Lynch Daniels or on, they're going to call McKenzie for the personal. That'll be the fourth on the worm. Seventh as a team on the Huskies, but it's a shooting foul anyway. So Enzikor will go to the line to shoot two. With 5.48 left, Coach Cottrell wants to try and save McKenzie for the last few minutes, and so he'll give him a breather now so that he doesn't pick up that fifth foul, and Jackson Stent will check back in. First free throw from Enzikor is good. The second one as well, and he has been their money man tonight, 24 points. With 5.40 to go, 66-59, Husky is Vantage. Hard out top, is going to dribble to the ball to the left angle. Looks for help now, gives it to Bonds. Bonds is picked up by Kalawale. Feeds it back to Hart. He'll leave it for DuBose. Drives in and lays it in. Ian DuBose in through traffic, lays it up and in. And Ian's got 24 to match in Zekor. High man on either team with the same number. 68-59, almost a steal by DeBose. He'll knock it out of bounds. Good defense by the Huskies. 20 on the shot clock as Lamar will come over to our right to inbound the basketball. Kalawale will look to get it inbounds, and he'll go to Hunter. Rolling down to five minutes left in regulation time here. Hunter with the yo-yo out top. Between the legs, picked up by Bonds. Now... Lynch Daniels will switch over. They switch back, almost a steal, and it is saved by Hunter. He'll fire up a three at the buzzer, won't go. Hart, though, is out raced for the rebound by Kalawale, and he'll save it with a new shot clock out top to Hunter. Unfortunate there for the Huskies, as Kalawale, with good hustle, is going to finish it off here with a little Euro step in the paint. Huskies were called for a travel on that move in the first half. Kalawale gets it here, and he cuts it back down to seven. 68-61, 4.22 to go. Lance Daniels is going to be bumped by Enzikor. That'll be the third on Josh Enzikor and the tenth on the team here. Our check at that was already their tenth, so double bonus the rest of the way for the Huskies, and it'll be Ollie to go to the line for HBU. And he comes up short on the first one. Huskies tonight at the free throw line. 11 of 17. Now 11 of 18 as Ollie misses them both. 
Still a seven point game. Turner brings it back up for the Cardinals. Kick it out top to Atwood, who's back out on the floor. Feeds it back to Hunter. Down low blocks right side in Zikor. Kick it back out to Hunter for a three, and he finds the range. With four minutes to go, it's back to a four-point game. 68-64. Ian sets up the half-court offense for HBU, but he's going to fire a three instead. Too strong off the iron. Long rebound will bounce out to B.J. Holmes for the Cardinals. He'll bring it up the floor. Cut off in the middle, but finds Kalawale on the baseline. Stint's going to come over, but gets him with the body. Tried to get the block, drew the foul instead. And Jackson will pick up his third. Stops the clock with 3.39 to go. And we'll have free throws for Kalawale when we come out of the timeout. Final media break of the regulation of regulation time here. And we've got one that's looking, looking like it's going to go down to the wire. 68-64 Huskies on the Husky Sports Network. At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. Rolling up on a cheap price feels good, but cheap comes with risk. Heart surgeons, pilots, no one hires a cheap one of them. Fact is, certain things must be done right. Installing electricity in Houston schools and hospitals needs to be built with manpower that spent 10,000 hours training to do their job. So for heart surgeons to do their job, we must do ours. Skilled labor isn't cheap, and cheap labor isn't all that skilled. The time is now to hire IBW electricians. At Holiday Inn Express, we can't guarantee that you'll be able to contain yourself at our breakfast bar. Morning, egg white omelet. Sup, lady bacon. Fruit. There it is. But we can guarantee that you'll get the best price when you book with us. Holiday Inn Express. Be the readiest. Hi, I'm Ron Cottrell. Thanks for listening to HBU Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. A couple more finals in in Southland Conference play tonight. Nichols comes from behind on the road in Natchitoches tonight to knock off Northwestern State 78-72. And SFA defends a home floor up in Nacogdoches with a 65-60 win over southeastern Louisiana. 68-64 here, 3.39 left in our ball game, and Kalawale at the free throw line for Lamar out of the timeout, and he hits the first free throw. His first attempt of the night, and it is good. Huskies send Bonds, Lynch Daniels, DeBose, Stent, and Hart back out onto the floor. Second free throw good as well. It's a two-point game. 3.36 left in regulation time. Huskies will see some pressure in the backcourt this trip up, but Bonds gets it across the stripe. He'll take it to the right angle looking for help. Lynch Daniels will cut off, so he'll go back to the middle of the floor and DeBose. Ian gets a screen from Jackson Stent, but he's double teamed. Way out top, going to try to go by, and he's going to be fouled by Atwood. Blocking foul on T.J. Atwood. That'll be his second. And it'll send DeBose to the line for two free throws. Well, here's where the Huskies will have the advantage. They've got free throws on every foul the rest of the way. Now they're going to have to take advantage when they get it. And they are just 11 of 18 at the stripe tonight, but Ian gets the first one to go here. Ian's having a great night. That is just his third free throw made out of six attempts, though. One more to come, and it is good. So he's now four of seven. He's up to 26 points, and the Huskies are back up by four. Garth is going to check back in. V.J. Holmes will sit down for Lamar. Philip McKenzie with four fouls stays on the bench for the Huskies. Jackson Stent stays out there with three. Hunter right side to Garth with a bounce pass picked up by Ollie Lynch Daniels. Take it to the middle, leave it left angle for Hunter. He's going to pop for three. Got it. Backed off just enough on Hunter to where he didn't hesitate to fire away, and we're down to a one-point lead for the Huskies. The 11-point lead earlier in this half has disappeared. And Zekor pops out high to pick up Hart, and he'll give it off to DeBose. 
This is where you test your medal in this conference season. Down low to Ed Hart. He goes up, gets it in off the glass. Count it. And the Huskies are back up by three. Seven for Ed, 2.20 to go. On her way out top. Leave it off for Garth. They've got a couple of three-point shooters in Garth and Hunter. And the Huskies will mark them closely. Hunter gets a screen. He'll drive in, and we're going to get a whistle and a foul. Going to be called on to Ollie. And that will be a one and one for Hunter. Ninth team foul on the Huskies. First team foul, our first personal on Oliver Lynch Daniels. Hunter to the free throw line. Garth will check out. They don't want him to pick up a foul on the defensive end of the floor, so they'll send B.J. Holmes back out there. Hunter's first free throw is good. Three of four at the stripe tonight for Jordan Hunter. He's got 11 points now. And the second free throw is good as well. Two-point game, or check it back to a one-point game, 72-71, and we roll under two minutes to go here in regulation time. Bonds looking for help, trying to give it to DeBose. Has it tipped away, though. Stolen by Kalawale up ahead to Holmes, and he can't finish, and they're going to call a goaltend as Nzikor tried to dunk it down through, but they're going to say the ball was still on the cylinder. The Lamar bench is upset by that, but I think the Trent Dews may have gotten the call right there with 1.45 to go. 72-71, you can hear a lot of Lamar fans are in the building tonight, and they're not happy. Bonds up the floor, Husky still up by one. 1.33 to go, Stent, left angle, finds DuBose, he'll take it in, float it up, and he got it to go. Friendly roll off the iron. The Huskies back up by three, 74-71. Holmes into the paint. He's going to be fouled by DuBose. Ian will pick up his second. 81 seconds left to go. And it's going to be V.J. Holmes to the line to shoot two. That's the 10th foul on the Huskies. So both teams with two free throws, no matter the situation, on the defensive end of the floor. Holmes' first free throw rattles down through. That's his first free throw attempt of the night. He's got three points, one of two from the floor. 74, 72, 81 seconds to go. Second free throw is good as well. Back to a one-point game. Bonds will bring it up. Huskies need ball control and ball security here. Minute 11 left to go. Bonds to the middle, stops at the elbow and backs it out. Looking for help. He'll go left angle to Stent, into the blocks to Hart. Now he'll back down on Nzikor, tries to put it up, puts it up, won't go off the window, and it's going to be controlled on the floor by Nzikor. Lamar can take the lead on this possession, down by one, 50 seconds to go. Huskies will get the ball back no matter what, but Holmes has it way out top. Bonds on him, feet at left angle to Hunter. He thought about a three in front of the bench over there, sends it down low, and it's stolen away by Oliver Lynch Daniels. He's going to be fouled by Hunter with 29.9 to go. The Huskies will send Ollie to the free throw line with a chance to take it back up to a three-point lead. Lance Daniels with two attempts earlier at the line. Struggled there, missed them both. Chance to make up for it here, but he's short on the first one. Still a one-point game, 29.9 to go. Timeout on the floor. And they're going to turn this one into a full timeout. So both teams will head to their respective benches to talk things over. 
and we will take the break as well. Huskies lead by one, a free throw to come for Oliver Lynch Daniels. We've got a timeout on the floor. Box combo with the lemonade, please. At Raisin Cane's, we do one thing, and we do it better than anyone else. So why not let our food do the talking? We hand cut our lemons daily. They're fresh squeezed and mixed with 100% natural cane sugar. Love the window. Raisin Cane's, only the best chicken finger meals. One love. <laughs> At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. Anyone can get you ready. Holiday and Express gets you the readiest. Because ready gives a pep talk. Showtime. But the readiest gives a pep rally. Holiday and Express. Be the readiest. You're looking. Back here at Sharp Gym, 29.9 seconds to go. Oliver Lynch Daniels with one free throw comes up short. The Huskies still have a one-point lead, but here come the Cardinals up the floor. Shot clock is off. They can have the final possession if they want it. And it winds down to 15 seconds to go. Hunter with the dribble, feed it out top. Guard's going to fire a three. It's off the mark. Saved underneath by Kalawale. He's double teamed. Tries to go up on the baseline, finds Atwood, and we're going to get a foul called with 5.5 seconds to go. Let's see who it's on. It's going to be on Ed Hart. That's his fourth, and it'll send T.J. Atwood to the free throw line. Atwood, uh, the junior from Beaumont Central High School. A couple of free throws here, and the first one is too strong. 5.5 seconds to go. Holmes checks back in, and now, and Coach Cottrell wants a timeout, 30-second timeout. So we'll hang on to it right here. Each coach has two timeouts left in their pockets. But there's 5.5 seconds to go in regulation time. Could we be headed toward overtime? One free throw to come for Atwood. He missed the first one. And he's one for three now at the line tonight. Even if he makes this second one, though, the Huskies will have five and a half ticks to try and get something done. You got to think that they'll want it in the hands of Ian DeBose. He's joined back in the blocks by Philip McKenzie, Ed Hart, Braxton Bonds, Oliver Lynch Daniels. This is why you played the tough pre-conference schedule to get you ready for games like this. Atwood at the line, gets the free throw. We're knotted up at 74. And now the Huskies will use up another timeout. And Coach Cottrell wants this one to be a full timeout. So this will be a 60-second break. And we'll go ahead and take it with them. Hang on to your hats, folks. The Huskies are in a barn burner right now, 74-74 on the Husky Sports Network. Firehouse Subs was founded by two firefighters over 20 years ago. And once a firefighter, always a firefighter. So they've seen to it that a portion of your purchase at all U.S. Firehouse Subs locations now goes toward providing life-saving equipment for first responders. And one more thing. They make awesome subs. Now get any of our 10 specialty subs in a new small size, each under 500 calories. Big flavor, small subs, starting at $3.99. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios.
Huskies' largest lead here in the second half was 11 points at the 12-minute mark. But Lamar has erased that. We're knotted up with five and a half seconds to go, and the Huskies are going to have to get it the length of the floor to try and get up a final shot here. Now Tick Price takes a look at the Huskies' offensive setup, and he wants a timeout. So now each team will have one left. This will be a 30-second timeout. Huskies have 28 points from Ian DeBose tonight. He'll be out there on the floor. Philip McKenzie has 10. He'll be out there. Oliver Lynch Daniels has seven points. He'll be out there as well. Bonds and Ty Dalton are also out there. They each have four points. Dalton will go to the back line to get the ball inbounds. He can run the baseline if he needs to, but there's going to be no pressure on him. But he will move around down low, trying to get it inbounds. He's going to go to Bonds. Bonds is going to bring it up. He's going to drive it in, float it up. It won't go, and we're going to head to overtime. Knot it up at 74. Well, the Huskies had a look, but Bonds didn't get the runner to go as time expires. And we will have five minutes of free basketball coming up straight ahead. Hang on to your hats, folks. OT on the way on the Husky Sports Network. At Memorial Hermann, we're many parts working in harmony, performing more brain and spinal surgeries than anyone in Houston conducting groundbreaking research at our Misher Neuroscience Institute, establishing the region's largest network of certified stroke centers. Some might say this makes for an accomplished performance, but to us, it's all in a day's work. Memorial Hermann. Breakthroughs every day. Going to school at Houston Baptist University was an excellent choice. As the official credit union of HBU, Houston Federal Credit Union is focused on helping you to continue to make great choices. HFCU will meet all your financial needs by providing the personal attention and variety of services you deserve. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. Hi, this is Ron Cottrell, head coach of the HBU Huskies. Thanks for listening to Huskies basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. Overtime coming up here at Sharp Gym. And if every conference game matches the intensity of this one, we're in for a quiet uh, conference season, folks. They toss it up to start the overtime period, and it's controlled by the Lamar Cardinals, and they'll bring it up into the forecourt. Atwood out top, finds Kalawale. He's picked up by DeBose, and we've got an offensive foul going to be called on T.J. Atwood, I believe, as he tried to back in on Lynch Daniels. Atwood will pick up his second. Offensive fouls, of course, do not get free throws. The fouls have not reset, though, and both teams are in the double bonus. DeBose has it. Left baseline. Going to get it down inside. Intended for McKenzie, but he couldn't reel it in. Stolen away by the Cardinals. Hunter up the floor. Leave it out top for Atwood. Drives into the middle. Puts up a floater over Ed Hart. Ed did a good job to avoid creating contact, but a nice little rainbow put up by Atwood. Almost a steal saved by DuBose. He's going to fire up a three and got it. Ian is money tonight. He's got 31, and the Huskies lead by one. And Bonds hit the deck hard. We've got a stoppage as the officials allow Braxton to collect himself. He looks like he's going to be okay, but they're going to have to mop up the floor where he hit the deck. Ian is going to go to the bench, and Chris Eaton, the head trainer for the Huskies, will take a look at him. Braxton 
So just wants to sit and watch for just a moment. Ian with the three is giving the Huskies a lead. Here's a tip and a steal. DeBose on the way, going to go through a double team. Has it knocked away? It's going to be knocked out of bounds off Nick Garth. Huskies basketball. DeBose wanted a foul. And Lamar wants the basketball. 77-76. The Huskies will maintain possession. 26 on the shot clock. Tick Price talks to Ryan McDaniel across the way. They're going to allow VJ Holmes to check in for Garth. Ollie Lynch Daniels will go to the baseline with 3.52 to go. There's a ball tipped on the inbounds pass. You got to be careful, and Hunter steals it away. He's on the move, takes it in, and we're going to get an offensive foul. Ed Hart took the charge, and Hunter draws the personal. That'll be his fifth, and Hunter is done for the night with 3.45 to go here in the overtime period. 77-76. Lamar has climbed out of an 11-point second-half hole to tie it up at the end of regulation. Huskies with a three from DeBose here in the overtime period. Atwood with two for Lamar through the first minute and 20 seconds as the Huskies bring it up. Ian. Stops inside the midcourt line, finds Ty Dalton. He'll look cross court to Ollie Lynch Daniels. Tries to dribble in, almost stolen away by Kalawale, but saved into the corner to DeBose. Back it out to the left angle. Now he's going to go baseline. Pulls up, won't go, but Dalton with the follow. Ty comes in and puts it back for his sixth point of the night, and the Huskies are up by three with 3.08 left. Dalton with his most significant minutes of the season tonight, and he's made them pay. Kalawale with the dribble into the paint, dishes it out on the wing to Garth, fires up a three, hit from behind, and taken down by Lynch Daniels. Long outlet to Dalton. His shot rims out, won't go. He hit the deck, and the rebound's going to be controlled by the Cardinals. Garth on the move, leave it for Judy, drives in, puts it up. And we're going to get an offensive foul. Judy with the drive. And Hart set up outside the semicircle and draws the charge. Huskies basketball with 2.34 to go. As we said, Lamar's proximity to the Huskies campus here as well as the fact that they've got several players from the Houston area on their roster has brought out a significant number of Lamar fans tonight. And right now they're letting the officiating crew know they're not happy about that call. But the Huskies will take it. They'll get it into the blocks to Hart. A couple of dribbles and they'll take it in, double teamed, and he's going to be fouled down inside. And I think it's going to be in Zekor who picks up the personal. And it'll send Edward Hart to the free throw line, and he can take this out to a two-possession game with a pair of free throws here and 2.17 to go. Ed tonight has seven, and the first free throw off the mark. One more to come. Ed was perfect at the line until that one, three of four now. Second free throw, much better looking, and it goes. And it is now a two-possession game, 80-76. Huskies by four. Still a lot of time left here in the overtime period as we roll down toward the two-minute mark. Holmes with the dribble out top. DuBose has him. Man-to-man defense for the Huskies. Cross-court pass, skips it over to Garth. Ollie picks him up, but he drives to the baseline, rolls one up, off the iron, and Hart with the glass. He's going to bring it out and leave it for Dalton on the outlet. 
into the corner to McKenzie. Take it to the middle of the floor. And he'll bring it back out. They want to eat up some clock. Right side out beyond the marker is Lynch Daniels. Looks for help, gets a screen from Hart. Takes it to the left angle. He'll hand it off to DeBose. Ian will try to drive by. Garth hits the deck. They go cross court to Dalton. Fires a three. Off the mark. DeBose fights for the board. He saves it to McKenzie, and they've got a new shot clock. And they'll try to eat up some more. Hart swings it to DeBose. Back out high to Lynch Daniels. Checks the game clock. Checks the shot clock. Holds it up out high as Holmes stays away. Now Ollie will bring it in. Screen from Hart. Take it down to the right baseline. Double teamed in the blocks now, and he's going to lose it out of bounds. It'll go off Ollie and back over to the Cardinals with 59 seconds to go. Not in the books, not in the bank yet. Holmes will bring it across the midcourt stripe, and Tick Price wants a timeout. So we'll hang on to it as this will be a 30-second timeout. 80-76, the Huskies led at the break at halftime, 38-31. Outscored by seven, 43-36 in the second half, but now have drawn back out to a four-point lead here in the overtime period. As we've been keeping an eye on the conference scoreboard all night tonight, we'll first let you know that just over a minute to go in Beaumont, Donna Finney's squad is down by 13 to the Lamar Lady Cardinals in their conference opener over there. 61-48 is the score there. But looking around the scoreboard, remind you of some earlier finals. Abilene Christian up at Moody Coliseum tonight defended the home floor against the Huskies' next opponent, the New Orleans Privateers. 68-58 there in spite of 18 points and seven boards from play shots for the Privateers. The Huskies will be over there Saturday afternoon in New Orleans to face UNO for game number two in conference play. Also in the books tonight, Nichols on the road in Natchitoches with a win over Northwestern State. 78-72 the final there. Southeastern Louisiana went on the road, and they played a tough one against SFA in Nacogdoches, but the Lumberjacks hold the home turf there, 65-60. And now another final, A&M Corpus Christi. In fact, two more finals. A&M Corpus Christi, a winner over Central Arkansas at home, I and mean, then they stayed on the road with a win over Incarnate Word. Here is Enzikor in the low blocks, going to drive in. He's going to be fouled by Ed Hart. And for Ed, that's number five. He's done. And Zekor will go to the line. And Jackson Stent will check in for the big fella. Ed finishes his night with eight points. Good effort. He faced a double team most of the evening when he got the ball down low. And then drew their leading scorer as a defensive assignment. And Zekor who's been on that 24-point mark for quite a while now, goes to the free throw line and misses the first free throw. 80-76, 48 seconds to go. Stent, McKenzie, DeBose, Lynch Daniels, and Dalton, and the second one spins out as well. The Huskies will have it as DeBose will steadily bring it across the stripe. Not in a hurry now. Down to 34 seconds, and we've got a whistle and a foul in the corner. McKenzie is going to be fouled by Enzikor, and he's done. Enzikor with a great night offensively tonight, but he's just fouled out of the ball game as McKenzie draws the fifth personal on the high point man for the Cardinals. Edwin Judy will check in for him. So Hunter and Enzikor have fouled out for the Cardinals. Hart for the Huskies. And HBU with a four, four point lead. I'll spit it out here in a moment, folks. And Phillip McKenzie going to the free throw line with two tosses here. 
The worm is one for two at the strike tonight. Two big ones right now. First one is dead, solid, perfect. Five point advantage. Phil's got 11 points now. One more free throw to come. Second one. Rainbowed and it finds the cords as well. Six point lead for the Huskies. 82-76, 31 seconds to go. In a hurry, Kalawale drives it in. He'll lay it up with the left hand. Huskies will give that up, though. Four-point game, and the shot clock is off. They can run out the clock if Lamar lets them, but Garth is going to foul. That'll be his fourth, and it'll send Oliver Lynch Daniels to the free throw line. Now, Ali is a reliable free throw shooter this year. He struggled tonight, though, 0-4 at the stripe. But that just means it's time to make that up. 26.7 seconds to go, a four-point advantage, and the free throw is good. Kissed the rim and then the glass before it found the cords, but they don't ask how, just how many. And he's got the first one and the second one. It's back out to a six-point lead, 84-78. Holmes in a hurry up the floor, going to give it to Garth. A three, won't go. Holmes can't control it, and DeBose does. He'll hold it up, and he's going to be fouled, and that's going to get Garth out of the game with his fifth. No, check it. They're going to give it to Holmes instead. That'll be his third. Garth will stay out there with four fouls. And Ian DeBose with his 31 points heads back to the free throw line. Have to get an update on rebounds for Ian. He's got 10 boards now, so Ian with another double-double. That's 32 as he makes the first free throw and the second as well. It's out to an eight-point lead. 15 ticks to go. Let him go, fellas. Don't foul. And Kalawali will drive it in and lay it in. And the Huskies just have to finish it off here. 86-80. Inbounds to Ali. Garth will foul him. That'll do it this time for Nick Garth with nine seconds to go. But hopefully that's academic as the Huskies will send Ollie to the free throw line to try and put a ribbon on this one and open up Southland Conference play with a big home win here as they get ready to head out on the road for their next three ball games. Easter's going to check in. Grayland Easter saw some minutes at the end of the first half, and now that Garth has fouled out, he's back out there on the floor. And Lynch Daniels to the free throw line. Nice rainbow, finds the cords again. So Ollie, after missing his first four, has made his next three, and the Huskies are up by seven. The second one is good. It's an eight-point game with nine ticks to go. Atwood inbounds to Kalawale. Dalton will run with him, but he'll dish it off to Judy. He'll jam it down through with four seconds left, and they'll get it into Stent. Stent will get it to Ollie, and that'll do it. The Huskies will hang on. It took five extra minutes, the second overtime ball game of the season, but a very tough, hard-earned victory here for the home team, and they'll carry a 1-0 record out onto the road in conference play. Well, stick with us, folks. Full post-game wrap coming up, including a visit with the head coach, Ron Cottrell. That's all straight ahead here on the Husky Sports Network and the Huskies post-game report after this. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Are you a graduate of Houston Baptist University? Did you know the value of your degree increases when you actively participate in the HBU Alumni Association? 
Your Alumni Association actively supports the growth, retention, and ranking of our school by our scholarship efforts. Husky Alumni Network volunteers actively work to recruit the best and brightest to HBU, and we promote and support programs intended to build a growing network of people committed to quality, higher Christian education through our alumni scholarship efforts. We also work to strengthen the bond between our university and the community, and we're your connection to over 18,000 fellow alumni, mostly in and around the Houston metro area. Log on to learn more about our mission and your privileges and benefits at hbu.edu slash alumni. And find us via social media on Facebook at the Houston Baptist University Alumni Association page and on Twitter and Instagram at hbu underscore alumni. But no matter how you do it, connect with the HBU Alumni Association because a strong alumni base equals a strong HBU. The real story is I'm in here every morning and uh, have sampled just about every kolache that they make here. Bacon, egg, and cheese on wheat for me, and then the rest is for the office. So, yes, I'll pick up every Friday. I'll stop by here and pick up some for my group. Well, I used to think it was just fruit-filled stuff, and then I came here, and there's eggs and bacon and cheese and all kinds of good stuff in there. It's like a whole breakfast and a bun. It's great. (laughs) It's always a good thing if you can eat healthy and not know it. you drive down the street looking for something to eat, you're going to pass five places to buy a sandwich, six places to buy a burger. There's only one place you can get a kolache, and that's Kolache Factory. It's delicious. You're going to have people that try to copy you, but they're not going to do it as well. We know what we're doing. We've been doing it for 25 years. We do it the best, and our success proves that. Houston's own Kolache Factory, the freshest, highest quality, best-tasting kolaches in town. Over 50 Houston area locations and a proud partner of HBU Athletics. Tammy and I have been going steady since high school. Tammy and Tommy, two peas in a pod, as they say. We have all the same friends. We like all the same things. I mean, we practically even have the same name. But there's one thing we could just never agree on. Soda. (sighs) I have been begging him all these years to just try Pepsi, and I knew he would change his tune. Yeah, yeah. So, finally, I had him take the Pepsi taste challenge. And go on, tell him what you told me, Tommy. (sighs) I'm a Pepsi man. Mmm. Right? Gosh, isn't Pepsi so good? I tell you what, I don't know why I didn't try it sooner. Me neither. It's so crisp and refreshing and bubbly. Like me. Like you. I'm always right. She's always right. (laughs) All across the South, people are choosing the great taste of Pepsi. Take the Pepsi Taste Challenge and let your taste decide. One day, I'll teach chemistry to kids. I'm going to be an architect. My dream is to be a chef. This is a world of possibilities. A world in which people who put their minds to something can really make a difference. My goal is to help the environment. Someday, I'll find a cure for cancer. At the U.S. Department of Education's Office of Federal Student Aid, we believe that aspiring minds can achieve anything. So we dedicate ourselves to making sure everyone has an opportunity to go to college. Each year, we provide more than $150 billion in grants, loans, and work-study funds, making higher education possible for anyone at any stage of life. I can go back to college. I can change careers. I can make a difference. Federal Student Aid, proud sponsor of the American Mind. Learn more about money for college at studentaid.gov. Run with UA Map My Run. With your UA Connected footwear, you can leave your phone behind. However, if you choose to run with it, the UA Map My Run app will give map views of your route and a deeper look at your workout with additional stats. We are under armor. The future is ours. Under Armour. We're passionate, delivering expert neurological care for adults and children. We're dedicated, responding to neurotrauma and stroke with LifeLight in our Level 1 Trauma Center. We're persistent, restoring lives at our Tier Rehabilitation and Research Hospital. We are Memorial Hermann. And we're making neuroscience breakthroughs every day. You're listening to the Husky Sports Network, powered by DNA Studios.
Welcome back into Sharp Jim here and into the Huskies postgame report on the Husky Sports Network. I'm Lonnie King and glad you stuck around on a happy occasion for the Huskies as they open up the conference with a home win here. It took overtime, five extra minutes, but they come away with an 88-82 victory over the Lamar Cardinals. A very tough win, very entertaining game. Uh, if you don't worry about that 11-point lead that the Huskies gave up in the second half, they had an 11-point advantage with 12.05 to go in regulation time and saw Lamar manage to wipe that out, bring it back to even at 74 at the end of regulation. But the Huskies outscore the Cardinals 14-8 to in the overtime period and come up with the six-point victory. Huskies are led tonight as usual by Ian DeBose. Ian finishes with 33 points, seven rebounds, and or check it, 10 rebounds, excuse me, and six assists, two block shots. Ian was a plus minus 11, a plus 11 in the plus minus column tonight in his 37 and a half minutes of floor time. He was 12 of 19 from the floor, three of five from the three point line, six of nine at the free throw line, just an outstanding individual performance by Ian DeBose, but he was assisted by other guys on the team as well. Phillip McKenzie had a very good game in 30 plus minutes of floor time. He had 12 points, four boards. Uh, Ed Hart fouled out of this game, but he finishes with 10 points and six rebounds. And then also winding up in double digits tonight, thanks to late free throws in this game, Oliver Lynch Daniels, 11 points, five boards, three assists, and a steal as well. Those are the four Huskies that finish up in double figures. They also get eight from Jalen Gates, six from Ty Dalton. Ty's best minutes of the season so far. We'll talk with Coach Cottrell about that when we check in with him here in just a couple of minutes. But uh, Ty with six points, four rebounds, and uh, just a great overall effort in just under 18 minutes of floor time tonight for Dalton. Then four apiece from Braxton Bonds and Ben Yoloko. Uh, Jackson Stent gave 12 solid minutes tonight, but uh, was unable to dent the scoreboard. He did have a steal in those 12 minutes, 0 for 1 from the floor for Stent. Huskies wind up shooting tonight 30 of 64 for 47%. They go 6 of 20 from the three-point line, a little below their season average of 35% for a 30% mark tonight. They wind up 22 of 32 at the free throw line, shoot 10 more free throws, and make nine more of those free throw attempts than the Lamar Cardinals, who were 13 of 22 at the stripe for 59% tonight. Lamar was also 5 of 18 from the three-point line for 28%. They did shoot over 50% from the floor, though, and most of that in the second half. They were 45% at the break and then went 14 of 25 for 56% from the floor in the second half, four of seven in the overtime period, but uh, also created or gave up a lot of turnovers in the overtime period that uh, helped the Huskies forge the victory tonight. But Lamar winds up 32 of 63 overall from the floor. 51%. Talked about the turnovers. They were fairly even. 20 TOs for Lamar, 18 for the Huskies. I'm sure that's a higher number than either coach would be happy with, but the Huskies will take it in the win. The Huskies got 14 points off those 20 turnovers. Lamar turned the 18 HBU turnovers into 16 points. Points in the paint was a big factor tonight. Lamar with 48, the Huskies with 42. Benches were fairly even, 21 to 18 advantage for the Cardinals there. 14 to 10 edge in fast break points for Lamar as well. You look at a lot of these statistical categories and you think, well, Lamar must have eked out a win here tonight. But no, the Huskies come away with the six-point victory, thanks primarily to, as we said, the late free throws. And they come away with the two-rebound edge, 38-36. Even up on the defensive boards, 29 all, but they come away with a 9-7 advantage on the offensive boards, and the Huskies will win the battle of the boards because of that. For Lamar, they see Enzikor finished with 24 points. He fouled out of this game with uh, 24 points. 
eight boards and four turnovers. He was joined in double digits by Nick Garth, who finishes with 14. He also fouled out. Jordan Hunter fouled out with 11. And Michael Kalawale came off the bench for 10 points and seven boards. Uh, and he did most of his damage late in the game. But uh, nice effort off the bench for Kalawale tonight. Rounding out the scoreboard for the Cardinals. They get eight from T.J. Atwood. Uh, Four from V.J. Holmes, three from Laquarius Page, two from Christian Barrett, and six from Edwin Judy. Graylin Easter uh, did not score. Jordan Foster off the bench did not score tonight. So that's the way it looks on paper. The Huskies will take it any way you slice it as they come away with a six-point win. We're going to take a timeout. When we come back, we'll chat with the head coach, Ryan Cottrell, here on the Huskies Post Game Report on the Husky Sports Network. Four points by Sheraton. Always a great stay. Everything you need. Plus, extras you love. All for a great rate. Over 150 hotels around the world. Travel the way you like. Check us out at fourpoints.com. Houston Federal Credit Union and Houston Baptist University have joined forces to put the howl back in your finances. HFCU offers several products and services such as auto loans, mortgages, and credit cards. And HFCU has a financial education program, Elevate, which is tailored to helping you increase your financial knowledge. Stop by any of our convenient locations or visit our website, www.houstonfcu.org, and experience the credit union difference today. Dogs up. I'm Robin. And I'm Chris. We're the brothers behind Firehouse Subs. Back when we were firemen, when it came to food, we said it better be something good and and a lot lot of it. That's what you get at Firehouse Subs. Take our hook and ladder sub. Smoked turkey breast, Virginia honey ham, and Monterey Jack cheese, all steam heated and piled high on a toasted sub roll. Our way beats their way. If you don't agree, it's free. You're going to cover that, right? My money's on the sub. Love the confidence. (laughs) Firehouse Sub, founded by firemen. International Brotherhood of Electric Workers, Local 716 in Houston, get up for work each day because we believe building schools to code matters. Because building Houston's hospitals correctly saves lives. Because training for 10,000 hours makes a difference. That's why we get up, because we want to make a difference. To be the best, hire the best. IBEW, where skill and value lock arms. The time is now to hire IBEW electricians. This is Ron Cottrell, and you're listening to Huskies Basketball on the DNA Husky Sports Network. And welcome back into the Huskies postgame report here at Sharp Gym tonight. The Huskies with an 88-82 victory to open the conference season. And we're joined by the head coach, Ron Cottrell. And, Coach, I'm, I'm sure the, the script didn't go exactly like you wanted with an 11-point lead at one point in the second half. You saw that disappear, but the guys come away with a nice uh, overtime effort for you. Yeah, I'm not surprised by the fact that the lead disappeared at any point in time during the game just because Lamar is such a good opponent and so powerful offensively. We had a heck of a time trying to keep Enziacor under control and, and underneath. And, I mean, we tried to do everything we could. We doubled him at times. We fronted him at times. And uh, every time they needed a big basket, they went to him. And we had a heck of a time trying to slow him down and, and I knew it was going to be a hard-fought game, there's no doubt. Yeah, during the broadcast, we talked a little bit about what a difficult night it was for Ed Hart because he was double-teamed basically every time he got the ball inside, and then on the defensive end, he had to stick with Zikor a lot of time. Yeah, it, it, and Ed, Ed's kind of gotten used to that. I mean, he's yeah. he's been doubled by Miami. He's been <laughs> doubled by a lot of people this year, and so he's kind of gotten a feel for that. Now, the, the, the beginning of the second half, was not a good stretch. And we got a three second because he wouldn't, he, he's trying to make a move, trying to make a move. We wanted him to kick it back out and reestablish himself. And then he didn't get back on defense and gave up a layup. That kind of got them going a little bit. Uh, but it's, it's one of those deals where in conference games, and we talked about this with our guys, you got to stay engaged every possession. You can't have lapses. And, and we had a couple lapses that gave them opportunities to get back in the game. And we did. <laughs> 
I, I, we, did, we did a lot of things to try to give them opportunities late in the game by missing some free throws, by, by a couple silly turnovers. Uh, but I'll tell you what, the three by, by Phil in front of our bench yeah. was, that was, huge. was a thing of beauty. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it was very beautiful. You're right. <laughs> Uh, and he gave you a great effort tonight, a dozen Absolutely. points, and he was active on the boards for you. Of course, what do you say about the effort you get night in and night out for me and DeBose? 33, 10, yeah. six assists, and a, I think a yeah. couple of blocks as well. Yeah, and, and even in his 10 rebounds, a lot of times when you got offensive-minded guys like he is, a lot, of their, a lot of their rebounds are offensive rebounds because they want to get the ball back so they can right. score. He only had one offensive rebound. He had yeah. nine defensive rebounds. That says a lot about his, his tenacity, his wanting to win the game. He's getting in there on the defensive end and clawing and scraping to get defensive rebounds because he knows we had to have the ball late in the game. I, I tell you what, what a, what a game by him. And, and that, you know, as we've gone through this season, he's getting more and more focus put on him by our opponents and he continues to step up. And the really good thing about Ian is he'll pass the ball. Anytime he sees and feels pressure and those guys are open, he's a willing passer because he wants to see us succeed overall as a team. One thing I've seen uh, watching him, too, this last year and a half is uh, he has that air of confidence, not, not cockiness, but he's got a, a confidence out there on the floor that, that translates well for his game. Yeah, he's not going to get get down on himself. He's going to play through things, and he's going and he's going to do that for his teammates too. He's going to give his teammates confidence because they know when he has the ball, when we need a big shot, they know that they can count on him. Uh, he's he's a heck of a player and an unbelievable young man. I could go on for an hour about the type of person he is off the court, type of student he is. Uh, people just see what he does in this jersey with zero on it. He's a tremendous representative of our program, our university. Yeah, a true leader of this squad. You know, I, I was just as impressed, though, by the minutes that Ty Dalton gave you tonight. Maybe Absolutely. his most significant minutes of the season so far for you. Yeah, we've seen this coming in practice with Ty. He's, he's really been building to this over the last, say, two weeks or so. Uh, he's a smart player, understands what his limitations are, what he can do, what he can't do. And, and smart passer. He's, he's a really good passer of the ball. He really felt bad he didn't hit that three over here on the wing late in the game. So he knew that would have knocked it out right there. Uh, but he's going he's gonna to make more of those than he misses. Well, I didn't want to dwell on it too much before the game because of uh, the situation. But it's especially nice to pick up this uh, home win in the opener because you've got your next three on the road, yeah. and they're, they're – it's always a tough go on the road in the conference, especially in New Orleans. We got a, we yeah. got a, a really tough trip heading over to New Orleans uh, for a Saturday afternoon game. So it's a short turnaround for an afternoon game. Uh, we've got to get rested, get prepared. We got to go over to New Orleans. We got a lot of prep work to do for them over these next two days and get the trip out of the way. Uh, and we got to lay it on the line because we've got to buy until next Saturday. So these two games are really important to us to make sure we come out and do everything we can to get a 2-0 and start before we get a, a, a week off, basically, to let everybody else play some games and us have a chance to rest a little bit before we then go back to South Louisiana to play a really tough Nichols team. Is, is it overstating it to talk about how, how different it kind of makes the perspective for the conference season when you come out with an opening night win as opposed to having to chase that 500 mark the rest of the way if you start out with a loss? Well, and you, you, as coaches, you know, which we, don't, we don't talk about this with the players, certainly, and we, we want them to, to come out ready to play, but you really want to win that home game. You don't want to put yourself in a bind to open to start the season and open and lose a home game. And as you said, to have to fight from there to get back in it. You know, the last thing you want to do is give up any home win that you can get. you got to get it. Uh, and then try to steal some on the road. So certainly we were feeling, feeling like as coaches we wanted to make sure we got this one tonight. Well, you did, and it was a great win, a nice way to open the conference season. Absolutely. We got 17 more. They all count the same, and, and now it's on to, to the next one. This next game is the next most important game we have on our, on our schedule. There you go. We'll see you Saturday. All right, sounds good. Ron Cottrell, the head coach of the Huskies, will take one final timeout, and then we'll come back and say so long for the evening here on the Huskies post-game report on the Husky Sports Network.
At Shipley Donuts, we make our donuts from scratch every single day. Nothing trucked in, frozen. And we are Texas born and raised since 1936. Not like those other guys. Shipley Donuts. Eighty-eight, eighty-two. our final score tonight. The Huskies a winner here on the home floor at Sharp Gym. We thank you for being along for the ride tonight. An exciting win to open up Southland Conference play. And the Huskies will be back at it Saturday afternoon in New Orleans at the Lakefront Arena. 2 p.m. as the scheduled start time will be on the air at 140 Central with the pregame show. We have all the play-by-play for you at that time. So until we see you then, for everyone that brought you this one, I'm Lonnie King. Thanks for being with us. Dogs up so long. You've been listening to HBU Husky Sports on the DNA Husky Sports Network. These broadcasts are brought to you by the corporate partners of HBU Athletics, Houston Federal Credit Union, Memorial Hermann Healthcare System, Marriott Houston West Chase, Raising Canes, Under Armour, Firehouse Subs, Pepsi, Shipley Donuts, Four Points by Sheraton, IBEW Local 716, Jimmy John Subs, Kalachi Factory, and Holiday Inn Express. That's going to do it for now, but we thank you for being a part of this broadcast, and until we see you again down the road, so long and dogs up.